Hello and welcome to a special edition of The Late Challenge, uh, a Jürgen Klopp special. Of course we were going to talk about this, it was a show we didn't think we'd be doing today, but we do have to do it. We're going to talk about the whole situation at length um, and what we're going to do this week is we're basically merging the shows so there isn't a separate Liverpool show and a, sh- a separate TLC show, there's just one big show about all of this and it is the late challenge number 52 as well uh, so i don't know about you mate but one of my aims when we set out to do this we didn't know how it would go whether people would like it how long we could keep it going all of those things and um, but what i always thought in my mind is let's get a year done let's do a year and here we are near enough a year in show 52 um next week or so i think is the actual date if you like of of when we, we did our first show but yeah we're here so yeah we did it yeah we made and, it. and it's funny like i hadn't thought about this the past couple of weeks we're, we're past the year anniversary of us having the first chat about it aren't we because mm. that was one of the things in we, home we got we got yeah we got from first chat in home baked to first show pretty quick didn't we? yeah yeah we just thought we're on to something let's do let's it do let's it. see what happens um, big thanks to everyone who supported it all the way too. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks to Matt as well. Uh, we know you're watching and listening, mate. Uh, who supported us all the way along. Uh, put his hand in his pocket to support us. Uh, thank you very much for that as well. Couldn't have done it without you, mate. Um, and yeah, it's still all a bit chaotic, uh, the late challenge at the moment. Um, as you know, if you watch or listen regularly, uh, I've started a full-time job. As a consequence, we've moved studio as well because we need to have, be in the studio at a later time. Uh, but we're going to try and get things to business as usual as soon as we can. Uh, still not live, of course, but you'll know that. Um, and yeah, this week we are doing a special extended chat about Jürgen Klopp and matters surrounding. Um, that's going to be quite sad, I would guess. Um, some of it, certainly from my perspective. Um, I thought of a title before when I was walking to my car. Morning Glory. Oh. See what I've done? Yeah, see what you've done. Um, but I'm not sure it works. Probably SEO people would say you can't do that. I did like the tweet I saw over the weekend as well. Um, I'm sure it's not to everyone's taste, but I'm going with it anyway. Uh, there was a, a tweet that become quite popular of a, a, a Scouse lad, a Liverpool fan, saying, so this is how the rest of the country felt when the Queen died. Then <laughs> um, There has been a little bit of that, a little bit of a sort of a, a feeling of mourning that Jürgen has decided to drag in at Liverpool. Uh, so before we get to that, uh, a few little bits and bobs. Uh, we've had some interesting feedback uh, the last couple of days. Um, I've been told um, on Twitter that um, Kopi reminds someone of Gary Neville. Um, as I said to him, there's not a lot I can do about that. <laughs> do you know what I loved about it? He said, "Sorry." Yeah, sorry, like, mate. I don't, I don't know why did why did he apologise for that for that opinion? I guess not. I mean, as, as Gallagher sorry. once said, he wants to be Gary Neville. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I guess that's where that's come from. Um, and then the other one. Yeah, but, it, but the funny thing about that comment is, it doesn't mean I am Gary Neville. Do you know no, what I mean? no. It's not, his. I don't know whether he's aware of this, but his. Him saying that I remind him of Gary Neville doesn't mean I remind anybody else of Gary Neville. doesn't mean I am actually like Gary Neville. And this could bring an influx of people saying, actually, Kobe, now that someone mentions it. But he didn't, he didn't actually specify... Whittle's answer to looks Gary Neville. Or, yeah. He didn't, he didn't specify whether it was looks no. or personality or both, did he? Or analysis. Or, just general, or, or analysis, yeah. Or yeah. general twattishness. Maybe no. he's just saying I'm a bit of a prick. I think that's it. I mean, which is right on all counts, do you know what I mean? If you'd like to clarify, uh, you know, we'll let you know. Um, I got a random one, uh, you know, so I've, I've put a tweet out here. We'll get to some of your tweets later on in the show. I put a tweet out, obviously, knowing that it wouldn't be, at, wouldn't be live, but we still like to hear from you and read out some of your points of view. Um, so thank you to everyone who did reply. We're going to do that later on. Uh, but to the tweet I put out asking for a few tweets for this show, uh, I got a reply to me rather than to the late challenge. Um, this is from Axel Wright Axel. He said, uh, my thoughts are, I like you. I liked you on the Anfield rap. You're very entertaining. Be less boring, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, 
<laughs> what a wild tweet. So I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have been able to predict the punchline. No, I didn't see that coming, did you? No. And every every line of the tweet was spaced out, you know, like it was a, on its own line. Yeah. So, you know, full suspense. Yeah. Uh, so I just, went, I just thought I'd go back to that one. So I went back and said, uh, mixed messages there, Lid. Yeah. And uh, he said, yeah. yes, mate. And it's this same style every time with the space and, and you know, it's so, like it's dramatic. Uh, short sentences so th the reply was yes mate i like you i listen to your podcast but if you want to be a public figure and earn money from it and grow your listenership be a bit less fucking guarded no so it's like it's it, the first part of the tweet a uh, compliment and the set the last bit is advice yeah I like that i like the way he's delivered it so I went back again. So it's like how you could how you could actually be, be become good at this. Yeah. So I went back again. So you know, knowing me as you do, yeah. what, what, what do you think I went back with? I wouldn't even I wouldn't even want to hazard a guess. <laughs> hazard a guess. Go I, on. I just went back with guarded my ass. <laughs> um, and he said he replied, um, "I've thought about subscribing, but you don't say anything that's not already been said elsewhere. Hope this helps." Yeah, so I just replied, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> it doesn't, mate. It doesn't, kind of um, guards, and, and, and also, it, the, the thought about subscribing, I'd say you haven't really engaged because, um, you know, what we talk about on the subscription shows, that's definitely not said elsewhere. No. Um, so you just, you haven't even got a grasp of the product, really, I don't think, mate. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, thanks and, anyway. And, and literally, we talk about things on the subscription shows that we legally probably can't talk about elsewhere. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, to, my ass. I could, I, I, I reckon I'd have got to that. With you reckon? Guesses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if there's one thing that I am, I don't think it's guarded, to be honest with you, but. Hey. I'd like. I'd be intrigued to hear in which ways we are. Oh, mate, is it? Just, mate, well, but again, we don't know. Just you or me or both. I mean, um, if you could describe the podcast in one word, what would it be? Let us know in the comments. Um, guarded, uh, basically, yeah. Um, but anyway, let's start with Friday then, and let's start with around about. I think it was ten thirty six that it popped up on was uh, it Friday. Yeah, that's Friday ten thirty six. Juicy. Uh, Paul Joyce of the Times tweeted it, I believe, and then it was very shortly followed by everyone else, followed by the clip of the interview and then the interview itself. Um, me, uh, the way I found out, um, I'm new to a new office, obviously, so um, I'm being all very professional and I've got my phone turned down and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. on, you know, do not disturb, whatever. And I got a notification on my watch um, and it was like, a, it was a push notification from the BBC. So, you know, reserved. Like with big, an alarm going off. Yeah, like reserved to a big news saying, you know, Jürgen Klopp will step down at the end of the season. And I've got to be honest, like I'm not doing it for dramatic effect. I wrote something for Love, Follow, Conquer over the weekend saying the Shit same thing. No, I, I didn't believe it. Yeah. So I was yeah, like, yeah. I was looking at it and then I, then I got my phone to look at it on the, you know, on the site, not believing the push note it. And there it was on the site. And I still thought, is this like, what was that, what was that group called? You wore like the Guy Fawk mask, like Anon or something, whatever. They what? the, the hackers. The hackers. Oh, okay. So I, I thought it was You thought they did like a massive hack. I thought and that's what like they decided they to do. The, the, same, the same people who hacked Phil McNulty's Twitter the other week thought, I know what we'll do. <laughs> Uh, I just didn't yeah. believe it. And like, it, to the point where someone in the office actually said, like, you know, are you all right? Because I was just there, like, staring Cry at me for ages. Floods of tears. No. Yeah. I just didn't believe it, honestly. Yeah. yeah. And like, it, it took like a good, good few minutes for it to like go in. Then I, my next thought was I put it on like my, you know, my mate's Liverpool WhatsApp group. Mm. They were coming back in, in a similar way. And I was just like, what was it like? Because this isn't. I've we haven't. Neither of us had this op, this uh, experience for a while. But I've had it for a long time. What was it like being in an office and it breaking? Was the was the chatter good? Because I've been in an office for things like that, and you can hear people talking. Like, what the fuck's going on? Just before you hear the news and everyone's chattering. It's like do you, have you ever experienced that in a footy ground when you're in a footy ground and everyone starts talking and like talking to each other. It's like when there's like yeah, it, it happens. I don't know why I'm saying. Have you ever? You you definitely have. It happen. It always happens when there's like. Joe, we're waiting for on a score at another ground or something like that. And it, 
no one's watching the match anymore. Everyone's like chattering to each other. Yeah. And it's a dead weird sound in a football stadium yeah, when yeah. everyone's just like whispering, chattering to, to each other. But I've had that in an office as well where everyone's like, I don't know what's going on. My office isn't that big. It's only an handful of people really. And, and I was the first one to spot oh, so the you, news. You, and then also they're not... None of them are like big footy fans. Uh, um, so, but they were still, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty seismic, isn't it? So it was like, you know, they were all like, oh, oh my God, what? You know, why? And and, and I was like, yeah, good question. Um, what, what what about you? How did you receive the news? How did you feel about the news when you saw it? Well, mad, madly, I was thinking about this at the weekend. Maybe, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, um, I had a lot of revelations over the past week to myself, which are, are not for the show. Maybe for the subscribe show, but um, maybe it's a revelation to me of how much more time I spend on Twitter than I tell myself I do. I was on Twitter. I was literally scrolling through Twitter and it came when on. the tw- when the first tweet came through. And it's funny you're the first person I've heard heard say this. I I thought exactly the same. I I can't remember whose first tweet I saw first, but th- my first thought was funny. Like funny joke that, like yeah. what, and then like Joe checked who it was, and it was one of the, it's that was that thing. I always think that's funny as well. Like they've clearly told the journalists, the the main journalists on the patch, to let them said them right. You can just tweet it, but it's going out. So you basically, and it is funny how that's changed, doesn't it? That would have been like a twenty four hour exclusive years ago, mm. and now it's a two minute exclusive. Yeah, like you get to tweet it before we put it on our official page. Um, but I remember starting to flick through and being like. Why would they do that wind up? Do you know what I mean? Why would, and and it was, and it is, it is the power. It's funny the power Joey C's got, isn't it, on Twitter? Just because of the way he uses Twitter, I'm sure it's just an accident. But like when you see Paul Joyce has tweeted it, it's like, gospel. Oh shit! Yeah, like this is actually real. Yeah, and then it was the same thing, like just following the threads and watching the, and it it wasn't until. I saw, Neil, I saw Neil from the rap say this, like, even when he saw the footage of Klopp, he was like, is this like some deep fake or something? Like, because we we're we entering that world as we've talked about in our shows in the past. So it's funny that like loads of our minds were doing this like disbelief, like I've refused to believe it. And it, I saw, when, it wasn't until I watched the clip of him and then obviously went on to the main interview. I was like, oh fuck, it's actually happening. So yeah, like how did I, it's, it, I think it's, I think this will be an interesting conversation because I'll say some things I haven't heard very many people say probably. Um, Cause I was surprised by the timing of it, but as I took it in and listened to him, I actually, I'm not in as much shock as everybody else. I don't think, I think um, I've been expecting this to a certain degree. I didn't expect it not right now, but it, let's say we'd have got to the end of the season and he'd done it. I'd have had no shocks at all. If it had been last year, and I know what the people have said this about last season, if he did announce the last season. But even now, I'm just like, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. And when you sit and listen to what he was saying and stuff, it ties into so much stuff we've talked about in the past and we'll get into on this, yeah. won't we? Um, but it is, it's huge. It's huge. It's huge. And it is, it's, I think it's quite sad to watch like the impact it has on so many people and how big this still is for so many people and how influential it is in their lives. And, um, I think it was Neil again to give him two name checks, but I think he said something which which I I I, I thought and I was like again I've not heard anyone else say. It, I think that I think the the saddest thing about it is supporting Liverpool has been quite has been fun for 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 a, a, a number of years now almost a decade, and it's not I know this is a mad thing to say about something that is just a, you know an entertainment business, but being a footy fan isn't often that much fun. And I know people like us talked a lot about during his era, make the most of it because it'll be over one day and it's going to be over in a few months. And we might, we might never see times like it again. We'll still win. I'm sure Liverpool football club will, will win trophies again and we'll have great times. But that, that, what he brought and that energy and that, that fun and entertainment. It's ended in the 30 years, isn't it? For me, you know, that's the big one. Yeah. Because, you know, we're old enough that we've been, you know, sentient and match going and whatever you want for all, every one of those 30 years. And so many of those 30 years were spent watching other clubs hoovering up the trophies, watching us, you know, sometimes coming nearly but not quite and thinking, is this some kind of case? Like, you know, is this ever going to happen? I've thought about it loads of times that, you know, my first game 
as a Liverpool fan at the ground was Crew Alexandra R- Rumbelow's Cup. And I c- I've still got the programme. And it says on the front of the programme, Champions of England, because we were champions then. Mm. But I I wasn't a match goer, mm. you know, for that. I was I was I was a match goer as of the following season. So I've been going the match in one form or another, in one, you know, to more larger and smaller extents. You know, uni obviously didn't go as much. Later became season ticket holder, etc. But to every one of those seasons, I've been there, and like I've been like it's not going to happen thirty in years, and then you know Man United winning all those titles. So to be the man that come in, made us believe, lifted that trophy, broke that case, then you can't. Well, you can't match that because I don't think we're going to go thirty years again. Whatever <laughs> happens, you know, touch wood. I think the club is in so much more, you know, if you look at, I've got it on the agenda, we'll come to it. You know, you look at the team that he had, the team that he picked the first day, Tottenham away, to what he's leaving. It's night and day, do you know what I mean? I just just think, hopefully, touch wood, all of that, the club is in a better place. Equally, though, I'm torn on it. And again, we're going to come on to all this, but I'm just torn on how soon it will be. Because I just think I just think it's massive. It's a massive hole that he will leave, and it's almost mission impossible a for the club to recruit and fill that hole, and whoever does come in to not be in this huge shadow in everything that they do. But we'll come on to that. Yeah. Uh, well, but uh, look, I think it's worth not skipping past something you said because uh, I want to. I think we should dwell on it for just for a, a little bit longer, and and the whole thing we're going to come on to as well, the filling the hole because. I also think it, it, it is, f- forget like it's a difficult task, it's impossible. You, yeah. you might as well just forget the fact now of replacing Jürgen Klopp. It can't be done. Look, look, I was thinking about this, when you look at even the list of the favourites to take over, and I was saying a None couple of years ago. like him. No, well, I know, but even, even not even that, like beyond, a step beyond that. Like I was saying ages, a, a couple of years ago, when people were talking about, should Gerard be the next manager? I was saying, that's not up to us right now. That's up to Steven Gerrard by the time, whenever Jürgen Klopp leaves, because the next Liverpool manager when Jürgen Klopp leaves should be the best manager in the world. That's where we've become now. Mm. When we recruited Klopp, we were in a very, very different place. So what we were looking for was a very special type of manager that could do very special things in a in a specific way. But, but a couple of years ago when I was first con- contemplating this and people were talking about Gerrard and that, I was saying, no, but where he's probably going to leave us, which Touchwood again is pr- hopefully going to be the case, we we could be league winners. We could be European winners. We we'll we'll be multiple trophy winners. Hopefully, we're in a completely different position. So actually, what the the list of and that's why the when we come on to the later Joe the favourites, it's really interesting. This no one again, no one's really talking about this. That's not a list of the best managers in the world. But if you do a list of the best managers in the world now, who are they? Like other than Klopp and Guardiola, you probably then go Ancelotti. Ancelotti. Yeah. Well, Ancelotti's not a good fit and he's an older manager anyway. Probably wouldn't get him out of Madrid. After Ancelotti, who is it? Who is like the stellar candidate? If you had to say, go just go and get the best manager in the world and put him in. We're, just, we're, we're in a weird era where there actually aren't mm. a big long list of them. There, there, there have been times in the past where there has been that list and now there isn't. So in a, in a couple of different ways, you just can't replace him. It's got to be a diff- it's no, got to be it's a different be totally conversation. Different, but the thing is. I wanted to dwell on, <laughs> having then dwelled on that, is the thirty years thing, because because like we're now through the other side that and he did it. He he got us to that that trophy. It's easy for us to now say, isn't it? It was thirty years. I often say this about people who've been in prison. Do you know what I mean? Like that. Wait, if you've been in prison for like forty years and you come out, being in prison for forty years turns into like a line in a conversation. Someone goes, "Well, where have you been?" You go, "I was in prison for forty years." But if you just stop and go, that was four decades of my life. I was behind bars. It's like that with this. Yeah. Three decades, as you said, basically our, our entire adult football support in life, we didn't win the league. Yeah. And we came close a handful of times. It wasn't many, was it? And even some of them, I remember reflecting like so many times on the Rafa one. And when you look at it with like cold, hard eyes, we didn't come close. Like it looked at one point like we were going to get close, but then United just fucking, if you, I reckon if you'd have asked Ferguson, He'd have gone, I'm not that worried about it. It was only Rodgers we came really close and obviously fell apart at the last hurdle. Um, and it that was a long time. And yeah. there, there were spells in that where we were looking at each other going, 
will it ever happen? Like if if he doesn't do it, who will do it? But well, he did, and that that is that is why it's so, it's such a big thing. Yeah, and and you know when it was, it was breaking ninety points and all that, you know all that happened under Klopp as well, and. You know, again, I, I keep saying we're going to come on to it. We're, we're in the middle of the show and I keep saying we're going to come on to it, come on to it. But, you know, we were a club where, you know, you know, but no one wanted, no one no one said, get me Brendan Rodgers, did they, let's be honest. And then when he when he was in place, some people bought into him, some people didn't, but you never had that unity of every Liverpool fan is behind this man. That was never there. He, I, even at the sort of height of the title challenge, the unlikely title challenge, there were still people who, weren't quite sure about him, weren't quite sure about the football, you know, said, you know, there's times where we should set up to defend or hold on to lead, he can't do it, he's he's this, he's that, you know, he talks about himself too much, he falls out with people, whatever. He's got a portrait of himself over his fireplace. All of those things, mate, yeah, you know, being Liverpool and all that and, you know, envelopes and all of those things that, you know, don't really need to dwell on, but safe to say, when we got Klopp, everyone went, boom, wow, and like, you know, I went to that first press conference and like he had journalists eating out the palm of his hand. You know, he, he was like almost like getting Ian Air into like a headlock. Like he just owned the place, like walked in and like it was his vibe, his aura was, I'm here, I'm serious, I deserve to be here. You know, watch me go type of thing. And it was like, come on. And you were right behind the man from day one. Everyone in that room could feel it. And I, and I, I just think, you know, to, to play for him, must be very similar like the you know he's just got that you know almost thing that you can't put your finger on he's one of them people that walks in and lights up a room and you listen and you you pay attention and if he's walking man giving you hugs and giving you praise and all the rest of it then you'll run through walls for him and i think i think it's going to be hard and like i, I get the conversation about and i agree with it that you know, we're in a good place when you look at the squad and the kids coming through and, you know, fantastic to have a 19-year-old spraying, a, you know, a, a great ball into the box of Curtis Jones at the weekend and all that. But equally, whoever comes in, it's surely going to be at the back of every single person's mind, well, you're not Jürgen Klopp, do you know what I mean? And, like, you, there's a level of you have to now prove that you're worthy to be in this position. It's going to be the same with the media, the same with the fans. And, look, you know... It, well, come on, oh, come on, I'll, I'll just stop saying it. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the Alonso thing, it's like, I think it's good that there's a link to Liverpool, but then, you know, some people are torn on that already, aren't they? And it's not even, it's not even like, it's just he's, he's top of the running with the bookies and a lot of the journalists are saying he's the top, you know, he's the top of the list. Well, that, that's the other side for me, it's, and it's, I'm glad you've raised it, is that when I was thinking about it over the weekend, so we'll, we'll come on. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. There's so much to talk about. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because obviously we'll talk about who should be the next manager. And I was saying to Robert before, it's it's interesting. And this goes back to the thing that I think my reaction is slightly different to most people's. Um, But for for months behind the scenes, I've been saying to you, haven't I, we should do some shows on like, I think I've even mentioned it on air, like we should do some shows on who would be the potential next Liverpool managers in the future. And I think it's because in the back of my mind, I just knew this was coming at some point soon. Um, and I was at the end of last week. I was just I was all in on the Alonso thing. I was and, and mainly because of what you've just been saying. I think it's very easy to forget how different and how shitty it is supporting a football club when everybody isn't unified on who the manager is. It's yeah. such a you think it's such a simple thing to get right. Joe, you know, if you owned a football club, I don't appoint someone that all the fans want as your manager. But it, think about our life supporting Liverpool. It's basically only Kenny Dalglish in and Jürgen, Joe, yeah. and then Jürgen. Yeah. Like, and they literally had to bring Kenny back to do the, go oh, be back on our side again, all yeah. be happy again, please all like us again. Because every other managerial appointment, I'm, and look, we're including the, the, the fella who was our generation's legend because he won us the fucking Champions League, he won us the European Cup, so we didn't have to fucking listen to all the Grand, granddads and dads and uncles banging on about San Etienne and Rome and Paris and we could fucking have our own we had Istanbul we had our thing and I used to argue with my uncles about this but that's the point I used to have to argue with them as the next generation down I would have my uncles and my dad's generation telling me Rafa Benitez was shit and I'd be like that's mad he's won the European Cup and they'd be like no he's shit so even the fella 
who won us the Champions League out the blue with a team of fucking... I still laugh. I still laugh looking at that side. I was. I watched... Who did I watch the other the week? And they did that thing, which I love to do. Just look at the two fucking lineups. Look at AC Milan. AC Milan is like a fantasy football all-time legend 11. And we've, we've got Milan Barros leading our attack. And I liked Milan Barros, but, you know... The, Vladimir Schmitz has scored in the final for us. Jimmy Traore played. The manager who won us the European Cup with that side still couldn't unify the fan base. No. He still couldn't have everybody going. He's good him. That's how hard it is to do. And that's, I think that's the biggest fe like fear for me. And maybe not even just fear, maybe the wrong word. Like the sadness of it again is we're probably not going to have that no matter who is and the that, next manager. And that all, all of that's a compliment to Ian Klopp, isn't it? Of course because, you it know, is, like yeah. to be a man that has got that stature, but then has got that like for nine years as as being able to like keep everyone pretty much on side. Okay. You know, there are some reports and we've read some things where it's like, you know, we didn't see eye to eye with everyone. I think you can work that out from you know, people that left and things like that. We know obviously Sacho is a prime example of you know of his own doing you know but he was very quickly bombed out i think probably i was another one um what's the other lad called he, he went off on loan to germany he's come back again and gone back out again immediately can't think of his name now Carvalho. yeah thank you uh but you know those aside there's not been many where it doesn't feel like he's had them on side all the way through and like you know that that's where my worry is really about in the immediacy when he goes you know, how, how do we suddenly transition into someone else and kick off the new season? Just going, right, okay, sound. Um, but, you know, we've got to do it. And and Liverpool have got to do it. And the people behind the scenes, FSG, etc., have got to do it. But I want to go all the way back. Let, let's try and, you know, let's try and get, let's try and use me agenda now and stop saying, we'll come on to that. Um, so we were talking about Friday. We were talking about how we felt. We were talking about, you know, how it all unfolded, really. Um some bits and bobs, you know, I, I read that the the interview we did, the extended interview, did you watch that? Yeah. That was done in one take, apparently. I mean, that's like impressive in itself, isn't it? And like, it's so good. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's so sad, but it's so good as well. He's just like, he's a brilliant communicator, isn't he? Well, I was just going to say, that, that sort of sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah. Is that he doesn't, I think if you said, even when you, you, you put it in this and I read it before, I was like, I'm not surprised it was one take. I wouldn't expect it to be anything else. Why? Because it's like us doing this. Yeah. He just talks. Yeah. But it's... he's just talking and he and he he's just communicating very honestly and authentically. And that's what he's always been. And that's why people connect with him so much. And yeah. he's and he is such a good leader. The authenticity, I think, is the absolute key to him. Like it, it, it's like you feel he's he's not bullshitting you. Yeah. He's telling you exactly how it is. Um, yes, he's been spiky at times. Yes, he's been narky. Yes, he's took on Des Kelly or Paul Tierney or whoever else. Yes, he's like celebrated in an official's face and pulled his hamstring in the process. But that all of that is what we love. It's not bullshit. Well, that's part of the authenticity, it's not David isn't it? Brent. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not. You know, you're not being sold some crap. You you see, in a very authentic man who got the club, wanted to come to the club, um, got the fans on side, loved the city, loved the people of the city. You know, the fact that he, he goes on himself about how much an honour it was to to be like, you know, the freedom of the city and all that. You know, he looks touched by that. Like, I, you know, being in the ground on Sunday, I, I, I'm i obviously like, you know, I'm towards the back of the cop. And I wrote in the, the piece I wrote over the weekend, I was saying, like, bizarrely, yeah. so it's like, and it almost feels weird to write it down. But, like, I wanted to go to the ground and, like, see him. Do you know what I mean? Like, just, you know, is he all right? Type of thing. And also, like, I felt like it was going to be, like, sort of group therapy almost for us all to go. And it did feel a little bit like that. And obviously, from where I am, I can see him. Do you know what I mean? But I can't see, like his facial expressions or whatever mm. you know I'm, I'm at the top of the cop and he's on the halfway line what later on when i was at home and like you know i put match of the day on and i saw what he was like jordan you'll never walk alone it's like heavy and like i'm getting shivers now like saying that like it was just like ah oh, jürgen lad are you sure mate do you know what i mean and like it looked like he was pretty he was proper keeping that in wasn't he do you know what I mean even like at the end like I think we all you know like some not everyone stands there and waits 
to see if he does the fist bumps. And like, it's almost like a bit of a joke he's got with the car. Like, is he going to do really, the fist yeah. bumps? Isn't he going to do them? And like, it's, it felt like everyone waited yesterday. It was like, you know, at the time of recording, um, you know, everyone was like, is he going to do it? And he didn't, he, he drew that like heart, didn't he? Yeah. And, and you give it a bit of a few of them, but it was, he was definitely doing that. Let's not make this about me. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously he said afterwards about, you know, getting behind them for Chelsea, which I think, I think everyone will do. Um, the other thing is, is like, you know, the timing of it and how it was delivered. Like I, I bumped into someone from the club, let's just say that, um, before the match. And I was having, and I was saying like, you know, you don't have to tell me or, or anything like that. But I was like, how many people do you reckon knew? Because obviously, like he's he's told the owners in November, and then sat on it for two months plus, um, and he was just telling me some little bits of logistics, saying, "Well, you know, like the people like even like people like filming the interview and stuff like that didn't know they were just told, you know, there's a job, um, you know, for whatever it was Thursday at this time type of thing. So they did well to keep it under wraps, but it's still. It, that's the bit that it is still sort of unsolved in my mind. I get the thing of, I get the line about, you know, like if we don't say something, it'll get out somewhere at some point and we'd rather do it our way. But still though, why now? Why this week? Why that day? You know, did was there an inkling? Did some? Did it leak and a reporter somewhere says, I've heard this? I mean, maybe we'll never know, but, the, you know, just in the middle of January just feels so random, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's it's funny with stuff like that, isn't it? Because it, I often say this about any decision in life. People, I think loads of people never stop to think about this. And you know, you know, and people who've watched and listened to this for our first year have heard me talk about you know, the, the idea of the people sitting around the boardroom table coming up with ideas and making decisions. And like literally everything starts with one person saying, well, when you've got to pick a date to do something, it's literally someone going, well, how about, about, yeah. how about Thursday the 20th? How about... Oh, I can't do then. Why I'm on holiday? Oh, uh, my missus is away. I can't do that. I've got to have the kids. Okay, well, what? When should it be then? Well, what about this date? And everyone goes, yeah. Was and there's nothing the more to it than that. Wasn't it's not saying like, like you know. Oh well, we knew something was happening because he moved his press conference for Norwich, and, and like it was almost like, yeah, that's part of the point, isn't it? That's what's been doing is adding. Yeah. You know, this constant media, constant responsibilities. Like I got so you know I. I put a few tweets out over the weekend and I wrote a piece and obviously got loads of feedback and you get blurts. Like I was almost going to do the subscription show about blurts, but, you know, I got one back and I just thought, oh my God, give me strength. So I was sort of saying like when you watch the long interview and you look, you know, you can almost like look into his eyes and you can see it's from the heart what he's saying. It doesn't feel like it's like he's blagging you. And I just sort of did a tweet saying, well, you know, I've watched that and I feel like, you know, he's if he wants to like put himself first and he wants to like live a normal life, put his family first, all of those things, like only he knows how he feels when he goes home at night. Like we're all presenting in a way at different times, aren't mm -hmm. we? Like this is work mode me. This is me when I go to be nuns and this is me when I actually get home. And I'm like, oh, you know, whatever. He might have been like that for all we know type of thing. And, and, and I was just saying, you know, there's obviously stresses and strains and pressure that come with this position and, you know, got got the got the thickest response ever, like, you know what I mean? Like, a proper whale skin response about, like, you know... Gets paid loads of money. He's not in the army or he's or a nurse. And you're like, I didn't say he was. <laughs> Does he... Is it only army and nurse that, that feel pressure yeah. then, is it? Yeah. Yes. It's only <laughs> army, nurses and doctors, that's yeah. it. And then outside that, you're not Just allowed to. So... And we've had this conversation before. Once you earn, I think I think the figure <laughs> is £66,500. Yes, Once you earn over £66,500, you can't have mental health problems and you yeah. can't be stressed. And you, you, your health's fine. Yeah, you don't everything's age, fine. You don't age. Yeah, your, your partner at home doesn't, <laughs> doesn't get on your back for not being no. there. It doesn't matter if you don't see your grandkids grow up. It doesn't you, matter that you're in a different country. Yeah. Um, yeah, does, yeah. Doesn't, doesn't matter that. You, you have don't. to miss all family events because you're cause, <laughs> you know, literally every wedding. You have to miss every wedding. Because you yeah. work on a Saturday and Sunday. Doesn't matter that you don't really see your wife that much yeah. because you know you're always traveling with the team or you're doing media or you're doing this, that, and the other. None of that matters because you've got money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we cleared that just, up. Just to clear that up for all that's, those people on the internet. That's been the like challenge. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, but I, that in itself, I, I think it is like 
said to you before, I think, I actually think one of the biggest things about this, like philosophically, is for everyone to take a step back and think about this. Like, this is, this is a fella doing a job that millions of people around the world would consider a dream job. And he wants to pack it in to live a normal life. And as my girlfriend very like wisely pointed out to me in Vix, I said to her, which ties into why I, what I, my strong belief now is like, and I've got a, I think I've got a compelling case about who I think the next manager should be, which we, we will talk about later. But um, <laughs> like she said to me, yeah, he's not, cause I, I said, it's going to be interesting what he, when he gets to live a normal life, whether he enjoys that or not. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. there's always the, the grass is always, the grass is green. It applies to every human on the planet. And she, and she said to me, yeah, because I went to her, I was chatting to her about it. She's not a footy fan, but you know, knows about us and that kind of thing. And um, I was like, yeah, who do you know who lives a normal life? Who loves it? I don't know anyone. And she went, is she went. Something, isn't that yeah, she exactly. Added? But she went very wisely yeah but he's not gonna live a normal life like all of us is he he's gonna live a normal life where he's retired and he's got millions of pounds in his bank account You're like oh yeah that's right actually like he can just do whatever he wants when he's when he's packed in for a year but the other thing is like saying you know that we don't know like you know almost a, we all have an ego right yeah yeah, yeah. A, a, and and in some way whether your whatever your personality is or however you present you have got an ego mm -hmm. And I wonder how he's going to cope having been the man. Do you know what I mean? But that, that's the bit that, that I think that's the bit that is, is key in this. Yeah. Everyone, for all of us, it's important for us to recognize he wants to pack him doing that job to be like all of us, to experience what we experience all the time. So the philosophical yeah, lesson in that to finish, that is. <laughs> yeah, but the philosophical bit in that is to get this bit in is... So next time you're with your grandkids or your kids or whatever, make the most of it because there are fucking multi-millionaire football managers out there who wish they were like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like who wish they could watch a match oh, on a bit, Saturday afternoon. Yeah, that bit's possible. I think, that's, I think that's worth pointing out. And at the same time, your point, yeah. And that's where I'm a bit like, just give him 12 months. Yeah, Ula you know what I mean? coming home saying like, well, you've been off all day, haven't yeah. you? You haven't made we're, the tea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have you fucking mowed the lawn? Yeah. Why is that like that? You took the, why haven't you took yeah. the bins out? As he's just lying in his bills, playing with his balls. <laughs> We're trying to watch like, he's trying to work his way through the Avenger movies. He's like, what? This is what I wanted to figure out what to do. And he's, like, still well, gonna, he's still going to yerk and clap as well, isn't he? He's not, so like, you know, he can't like, you know, we can't just start going the boozer or something and, <laughs> and, and not expect everyone to be all but the, over there him, is like. a, I mean, there's a, we're almost writing like a bit of a, like a, I think the, you could do a bit of a dark comedy movie about this or series where like Jürgen Klopp's life when he's not a footy yeah. manager. Do you know what I mean? Just like bouncing around. M Mickey Flanagan does a boss bit on it. Have you ever heard where he's just like, just becomes a pain in the arse. He said like under his wife's jaw, like the cliched, like under his wife's feet and his wife's like, get out the fucking house. Yeah, I like having time to myself. Yeah. And he said, Mickey Flanagan's got this bit where he talks about you know, like the, the holes in the fences at building sites where you can look in. You ever seen him do this bit? No. And he's like, he's got nothing to do. So he's just like popping his head through those holes going, all right, lads, <laughs> what, are you up, what are you up to? Just watching them build a house because he's bored. Well, I mean, like, I mean, presumably he's going to go back to Germany, you'd, you'd guess. Um, you know, we mentioned that he's a grandfather now and the grandchild is in Germany. Oh, well, so. I was going to say that. Is that where they are? So, yeah. you know, that makes sense that he would, he'd go and spend more time there. But you know what comes to my mind? I know it's daft and I'm being daft. I'm not being serious here. But do you remember when he, do you remember when he did the feature where he went and played bowls with the uh, with the former yeah, bowling yeah, yeah. club? Yeah. That came to my mind. I was thinking, yeah, oh, you don't have a game that. of bowls with yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> It's got a bit more time on yeah, but, but this is the thing for me. That I think that's the bit right. Go in the fresh field, have when, a point. When you're the manager of Liverpool Football Club, you're under all this pressure and you've got all this, and you get to go and have a game of balls with those fellas. There's a part of you goes, I'd love to do this every week. But how many weeks when you are the type of fella who's thrived in that environment, how many weeks will it take? I've, I've often joked about this, and this is I'm still trying to figure this out in my life after a few years of doing it. Where's the right balance? Because... I, in a vet, you know, before anyone starts saying, I'm not saying I'm like fucking Jürgen Klopp and like that, but I've been in the highly stressed environment, right? And then left it. Similar pattern, right? I've seen loads of people do it. But then you come in, I've experienced coming into the sitting around with your feet up, going, hmm. How many times would he be, would he play, be, be playing bowls with the old fellas before he's going to them? Right. Jim's can we get, up, he does me heads yeah, well, not, not only just that, but like getting competitive about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Going, right. I want to win this. Hey, Jim, you need to be fucking doing a bit more practice on your, 
and look, none of, none of that might happen, but I, you've mentioned him in here, and I think the most, one, one of the most interesting comments that was made was just a very quiet throwaway comment by Pep Guardiola, yeah, where he was basically on. like, he'll be back. Yeah, yeah, he'll be back. He'll be back in a year and all yeah. that. Because he's, he's done it, hasn't he? He's done it. He knows what it's like to be those fellas and to thrive off that environment and to just need a break. And once you've had a break, and this this is why it ties into my idea of who should take over. The number of times we've heard people in the past say about Joanne Kenny was like, I'm done. I'm burnt out. And the biggest mistake the club made was letting him quit and replacing him when what they should have done is said to him, Go and have a break, mate. Well, I, someone said this to me last night on Twitter about Klopp, and I'm not sure about it as a concept, to be honest. A, when's that ever happened? And B, if you did that, so say you did it now, and you went to Klopp, okay, because uh, some of the tweets we've had, and I've asked this question as well, like, do you feel there's anything that anyone could have done to, to change his mind, whether it's take some responsibility back off him, or say have a break and all this kind of stuff? On, on the have a break thing, my problem with that is, well, you know he's coming back. So whoever's the boss in the interim is already undermined from day one. So Pep Linders, a lot of people saying his name, so Pep Linders walks in. All right, boys, so I'm the boss now until Jürgen comes back. I mean, your, your authority is undermined, isn't it? 100%. And, and everyone's thinking about, well, when he comes back this, when he comes back that. And we'd be saying that. And the media would be saying that. Yeah. So and this, it'd be like, you'd be in this weird, like, whirl where you're just waiting for when he's come back and coming back again. I don't think that's a healthy place to be. No, I agree. Which is why I don't think they should have given Kenny Dalglish a holiday. And I don't think they should give Jürgen Klopp a holiday. I think they should structure it so that it doesn't close the doors. And that's why... Do you, want, do you want to go into it? We'll go into it now. Well, he hasn't it closed the doors, has he? Because he said, you know, he said, I would never manage another club in the Premier League. Yeah, but so this is why, right? So I, mean, I've, I've, I thought a lot about this. Yeah, I thought a lot about this. I think that's why all in all, and I know we're jumping ahead here and we'll jump around ah, loads and all that, but... We've been talking for 45 minutes and we're still making still got to through. start. I know, <laughs> I know. Um, that's why I'd give it to Linders, having considered it, because... But Linders is going? Yeah, but... I know they've said that. I know they've said the backroom team is going, but I think, I can't, why is Linders going? Linders is going because he wants a managerial job, basically. So Klopp's leaving here. Well, that's the line. Yeah, yeah, that's the line. But okay, so I, know, I get that. And I know people, people are going to say to me, saying, they're going. And then people are looking at it and saying, well, if you're clearing the deck, someone's already coming in. Well, I, and I guess that's the case. I, get, I guess, look, I guess what Everton I'm about to say, everyone's going to say, that's bullshit, Kopi, and it's already been decided. Great. I'm just really selling. I'm this, really mate. selling this. But so put it right. If if FSG are listening, and I know I know they do because because you know, we've been accused yeah, of John. John's, for that money, John's pa back pocket and all that. Yeah. This is why I, I think it should be Linders, and I, and I can't believe that if you offered Pep Linders the Liverpool manager's job, he wouldn't hang around. Do you know what I mean? This I, is why he's getting off. Yes, exactly. So, I think. Think about le lessons from history. We've been talking lately about the similarities between what's happening at Man United and what happened at Liverpool after our dynasty ended. And the and what happened was you had this you had this setup, and in, in Liverpool you had this setup built on the boot room as it was back then, mm -hmm. and this this keeping keeping the culture going. What we're talking about when we're, we're worried about what's happening, and even you pointed out the Van Dyke interview. It's not just Klopp that that we're losing here. Potentially, we're losing the entire culture that Klopp built. So think about it as a company behind the scenes. Everyone that's there is going to be really sad to see Klopp leave. But if you kept everything else the same, every all those relationships are still intact. The boot room, the the cafeteria, the sports science department. All of the relationships remain in place. The people who help build, help Klopp build that culture are all still there. So you continue the culture. Klopp himself has said Linders is ready. And look, this is the only bit that you question because he's gone off and tried to be a manager before and it didn't work out and mm. he came back. So I get there's a risk with this, but for me, there's a risk no matter which way you turn here. So my question is, how do you mitigate the risk whilst potentially like looking at Jürgen over here? So you give it to Linders because as well, do you know what I said before about who's the compelling alternative? 
None of the alternatives. So the, the top two favourites are Alonso and Deserbi. Haven't won anything. Pep Linders has won everything. And okay, assistant manager, as manager. yeah. But he's won everything. He knows what it takes to win the league, to win the Champions League, to win the Club World Cup, to fight on four fronts, to to run something like... And it, Okay, he hasn't run it in the top seat, but he knows he's been next to Klopp for the back end of Klopp's tenure when we've done it all. Yeah, but he wrote some book, lad. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, and that's what I'll start getting thrown at me. I get this. But for me, if you do that right, think of think of when Shankly left. This is, And this is the comparison in history. Pegasley didn't want it, by the way. Well, <laughs> and, and, but this is the thing I don't know. So, so, Joe, if you're from that generation and you know, I can't imagine that Liverpool fans were going... What the greatest manager we've ever had is leaving. Let's just give it to his assistant. I would imagine back then they'd have been saying, and I don't know who the big other managers were back then, they'd have been going, go and get him, go and get him. We gave it to the opposite type of character. So we knew we couldn't get another Bill Shankly. So we gave it to a very unassuming character who continued the work that Shankly had been doing and built on top of it. And look what happened next. And for me, there's the lessons from history that United are now seeing from us. There are, there are so many echoes of what that is with Shankly and Klopp that I think, he, I know this sounds like a mad way to make a decision, but for me, the feel of it is let Linders do it because what's your worst case scenario? It goes wrong, right? Which it could with anybody, but at least you're keeping that culture going. The, the players already know him. The, he's worked with everyone. He's got that whole thing through to you from the youth setup right the way through. He'll keep all that going. And if it goes badly wrong, Jabi Alonso's had another year in his job the Zerbi's had another year in his job and you've still got the what if Klopp changes his mind and he could come back into a seamless environment. But you know That's what else I sense. think about it is if you're Pep Linders, you're not fucking hiding to nothing there, aren't you? So, you know, if, if you, you know, the line is, isn't it, that he's he's got aspiration to be a manager in his own right. Okay, so yeah, and, and yeah, he did have a go and then he come back again. If you take the reins at Liverpool and it goes Pete Tong. You're done, aren't you? Like, what? What you go and do after that? Yeah, I get. You, you got your chance. I know, and and I think he's a he's a bright fella, Linders. I, I, you know, I briefly met him. Like, I'm not saying like, but he come across as a sound and b incredibly knowledgeable to me. That was my impression of him. Mm-hmm. I think he comes across like that to everyone, doesn't? Yeah, he? in press conferences. And 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 so I think he, he potentially he'd look at it and say, "Fuck that!" Walk in the footsteps of Jurgen Klopp. I'm all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. And look, could, could you blame my, him for doing this that? Is my, this is my problem with it now. And I know it's got to be a problem that's got to be solved, but I can only tell you what's in my brain. I don't get it. Anyone who doesn't feel like that now. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, you know, of course, there's all the daft people who are trying to do, you know, Jürgen down. Just just ignore them, balance. Uh, there's absolutely no point in dwelling on them. So he's done a fantastic job. He's created a culture, as you say, it's very much a, a culture that revolves around him, you know, this great man and all the rest of it. You're right, I agree with you that you look out there and there doesn't seem to be that kind of almost personality manager out there now. Like Mourinho's like busted flush now, isn't he? But I mean, he's in that category of he's that type of man, isn't he? I was going to jokingly message over the weekend saying, what about Mourinho? <laughs> yeah, no, he's in, he's in the bet and like, but he's, you know, rightly way, way, way down at it. But the other thing now is, you know, and, and people have said this in a, bell end way for a long time and you know and I, I get why it, it just became so great and that it was brought up so often you're just like lads you know can we just concentrate on on what's going on this is now a big test for the owners once again isn't it because what you're saying there i was thinking when you were saying it they w- would maybe say well we're still here you know what i mean mike gordon's still here um you know or the board is still here so we're going to retain the culture. We're, you know, we're, we're the people that lead on that. You know, so, some might say that given the job to Jürgen Klopp, he was the most wanted manager in the world at the time, wasn't exactly a difficult shout. And maybe, and, and it, it appears, doesn't it, from what has been said in books and what he said himself, that he had the choice of a lot of clubs, both, you know, both Manchester clubs, supposedly, you know, at different times, made it clear he could go there, Arsenal, Tottenham. I'm sure there were other offers elsewhere. He want, he chose us almost, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, and I, what worries me now is brains that came up with 
Brendan Rodgers are now being asked to come up with a replacement for Jürgen Klopp. And, and look, you know, the people leading the betting, I think, make sense, don't they? The, well, certainly the top two. For me, I like the look of the top two. And beyond that, I'm like, I'm not sure. I don't even like the look of the top two anymore, though, you know. You talked because yourself out of it already. I've talked myself out of the Zerbi on a, on a couple of levels and, and p- partly because of what Alonso's done. Like, think of what Alonso's done. We mentioned, I think we mentioned this off air last week. Um, it's ridiculous what Alonso's done. Like, he's taken a side that was battling relegation when he took mm. over and they're top of the Bundesliga and unbeaten. Yeah. It, it, I, for all the people who are saying, like, he hasn't done enough. If And that's why I'm saying it makes sense to give it to Linders because... If if you, the risk with giving it to Linders right is that Alonso gets snapped up by someone else in the meantime, because aside from Linders, I don't think there's for for me and look, I don't I don't know enough other managers outside of the most obvious ones. So there could be someone who's brilliant, and I'm I'm not talking about them. But for me, there's no better fit than Jabby Alonso because of all the things we've been talking about, I, I, and. It might not be everybody would be on board with Alonso being the manager, most but I think most be, people would yeah. be. I think it's as close as you can get. My concern with Deserbi is, yeah, he's talked about as this unbelievable manager, the next Guardiola and all of that. But there has been a dip this season. And I know they've had European football to contend with, but Leverkusen are in Europe as well, aren't they? Leverkusen are unbeaten in all competitions. That's f- it's, it's Brighton's first one though, isn't it, basically? Yeah, I get that. But I think my point is like, it, I don't know. I don't think you can really judge him on Brighton's performances. Personally. No, yeah. I get that. But, but I mean, without sounding like a knobhead, it's Brighton. It's Brighton. I get that. But but then that, that for me is a bit like how how different. I'm, I'm saying this all for the first time without thinking about it, which is why it's not come out brilliantly, which is great for a podcast. But um, <laughs> how different is Deserby to Brendan Rodgers when we appointed Rodgers? Like. Brendan Rodgers was highly rated, sort of seen as like you know, an up-and-coming young manager, very good tactically, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I know I'm showing my naivety about Deserbi in, in other leagues, but for me, if Alonso, you know, let's compare it to Alonso. If Alonso was five months further down the line, he'd actually won the Bundesliga. Alonso's in the category of Jose Mourinho then, isn't he, back in the day? And Rafa Benitez back in the day. Like, that that up and coming manager that's won a big league, like has won one of the major leagues, and then that does put him right in the in the in the sweet spot for who we want. He's got the links with the club. He's won everything. He's managed. He's played under loads of amazing managers. Have you seen the interview with Mourinho where he was talking about him? I was only watching this a couple of weeks ago. Talking about who? Talking about Alonso. No. This, this is from a couple of years ago. They basically just says someone says to Mourinho, "Of all the people you've managed, who do you see as being a good manager one day?" And he names Alonso and he and he explains why. And someone was showing the clip, showing, you know, what he's doing now and how he's progressed his career. Um, but coming back to my, uh, like the idea of Linders, the thing with Linders is Alonso would be, a, I think people would be much more comfortable with Alonso if he'd been managing Leverkusen for one more year and had won the Bundesliga already. Yeah, obviously. So my my thing, my thing a, we've got a weird timing thing here as well. Yeah, hundred percent. My thing, my thing about him, where I'm I'm convinced, if you like, or more convinced, is is the, is you know what he's done as a player as well. So you know, I think about like you know why why would your current squad and, and players you're trying to recruit, why would they respect you? And like Alonso can walk into any room and say, play for Liverpool, won the European Cup play for Real Madrid you know like I've played with like the best players that are so I've walked into the biggest dressing rooms of the biggest clubs well he's won everything hasn't he so that internationally yeah. as well so that demands absolute respect doesn't it and, and I read somewhere about you know like he, he's he's a, sort of like one of them managers who like he'll have a game in training type of thing and the players are still like bloody hell yeah do you know what I mean that in it, that's another, that's like a, like you wouldn't get Klopp doing that because by his own admission, okay, he played and he was a pro, but he wasn't, he's not Alonso, not is he? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like a different type of respect, isn't it? Yeah. But I also think like, you know, he's been here, like, you know, he knows what the media is like. He might not have experienced that as a manager, but he's not daft. He can see it. And, you know, he's always, he's always come across as a, an intelligent fella, a thinker, all of those things. And, you know, I think he's, you know, he's top of the list for a reason, isn't he? When you look at it and you're going down, you know, the, there's one or two, 
you know, left field ones, you know, um, what's he called that? Thomas Frank, um, you know, who obviously um, has been very complimentary about Liverpool on a number of occasions. Nice fella, comes across well. He's one that could definitely deal with the media. Again, though, you think... I think it'd be a wild... I've seen a couple of people talking about Frank. Like, yeah, like it's a serious... Like, it's a serious idea. No. And, and I'm like, sorry. Like, go back to what I was saying before about a couple of years ago. Well, when we, when Jürgen Klopp leaves, we should get the best manager in the world. He's Brentford's manager. And and I and let me just say as well, I really like Frank. I think he's great. But the Brentford's manager should not, with what he's done at Brentford, should no. not be Jürgen Klopp's replacement. The one on that list who I'm quite surprised he's so far down, to be honest, um, who I was talking about a few years ago is Thomas Tuchel. Oh, and I know, I know it's, but I know it's, I know he's at Bayern Munich. He's a knob. Do, do you think he's that bad? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Like I, I just don't want a knob in, in in charge of Liverpool. Yeah, I I'm know not, that's not like you know cutting edge analysis, but Roy Hodgson was quite enough for one lifetime. Yeah, but well, it's funny. That, it's funny that that's your first reaction to him because I always thought he came across all right, and I, and I it comes back to the like same him. thing of like, um, you're not going to get another clock. But that's where you know you keep coming back to Alonso because going back earlier in the season, Postacoglu was yeah. you know, would have been. A shout in maybe a year from now. I think did, he's did done you... himself out of it the way he's managed Spurs, personally. Do you think? Yeah. What, in it, like the, you know, the, the daft, reckless that... stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. We... Not, not sure you've done yourself any favours there, mate, do you know what I mean? So he, he's in the better, isn't he? But I can't see that in a million years now. But it's funny when if you just Here's look the at the list, that's, like where, that's where sunk, I am. Hasn't it? I, I do think like, and look, the only caveat, the caveat I've got to the Pep Linders idea is the thing you said about transfers and that's where I would being a number I would actually, one's a different world though isn't it no I, I know that I know that but I, I would and number one at Liverpool yeah but I I would I would pull in the players I, Joe, we've got this management group like the senior players leadership group whatever they call it and I would quietly say to them who would you rather have would you rather carry on with Linders do you respect them enough well, to might, be the number they one they might do that that might be part of the process that they do speak you would to think, them you would like to the think they would, wouldn't type, type thing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah and no, because in a way, they're transient, aren't they? Like the, all the people that pass through our club are, the club stays yeah. forever. And, you know, you just have people that own it for a bit, leave, manage it for a bit, leave, play for it a bit, leave. And the club is the, is the thing that remains. So that's how the owners have got to look at it. It's not just like, who do the current dressing room quite fancy? The current dressing room is going to keep changing and keep. No, I know that, anyway. and I, I wouldn't say it as like you know uh, that that I mean, they should they might decide. Think he's a blur. No, yeah, but that but that's the important thing for me. If there's a strong opinion either way, do you know what I mean? Mm. If you've well, got, it, it's done, isn't it? By the looks, you know, they've ordered to announce it and not even leave it as an option on the table. Well, it's it's done, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. You know, because they're they're a group of people who who've presented themselves as thinkers and brain trust and all that kind of stuff. Mm. They're, they're, they're a group of people that say, you know, we'll always do our due diligence and it's based on stats and blah, 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 blah. So if they did all that and then just went, oh, we're just going to give it to Linders now, you'd be like, well, why did you, you know, everyone would have a question about that, wouldn't they, including including me? So I think that, but don't you think that's the right way to do it anyway? Like if I, I'd be more worried well, if they just gave it to Linders. November. No, I know, but I'd be more worried if they gave it to Linders without doing the rest of it. Like, I, what I'd want them to do is, they've got, well, we've explored all options and well, Linders that, is the best one. On that, do you not think, because I've heard people talk about this before, about people who run clubs and run clubs sensibly and well. And I can't remember who it was. It, 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 I, I can, I, I'm pretty sure it was Rory Smith who was talking about it. I can't remember what set of owners and what club he was referring to. But I'm pretty sure I heard him talking once about the idea that, and it makes sense, you always have a list of managers. You always have people that could be the next manager because you don't know what's going to happen around the corner. Yeah. And that's what that's what businesses do, isn't it? That's what the best leaders do. They plan, they have plans in place. If this happens, well, we're going to do that. If this happens, we're going to do that. So they've known since November already. And all this, oh yeah, and now we can press the button. Like bo bollocks, like as if they, they haven't just been sitting on their hands for two months. Mm. Plus as well, you know, even like last season, we lost 14 games last season, all comps. Are you telling me it didn't cross the mind that 
maybe Jürgen's races run because we were saying it mm. fans were mm. saying like he looks broken he looks tired he's tetchy he's coming off when we've been beaten by wolves and saying I don't know do you know what I mean yeah so and I, as you said before if he'd have said then listen I'm done and he said he said he said since hasn't he that it, it was crossing his mind mm. then mm. so you're not telling me that the club that you know the people running the club weren't looking at their options then so they must already have people in mind. And, and and look, you don't get a sense from any of the reporters that Everton's getting leaked now. You know, and, and you know, Klopp not coming out. Uh, the news about Klopp not coming out suggests that, like, that they're running a tight ship in that respect. But they must have an idea already. Yeah, of course. Well, I, th- I think... And, and maybe they- that's part of the time and that that actually they want to now speak to someone and that, that ups the stakes, that ups the likelihood of something leaking out because yeah. you remember you remember yeah. when Hicks and Gillette wanted to get rid of Rafa and it got it, it was leaked that they spoke to Jürgen Klinsmann wasn't yeah. it? Well I was just about to mention that because I remember at the time there was an uproar and obviously like at the time as a Benitez fan I was like it's fucking ridiculous that you even think about replacing with Klinsmann that's the that shows how shit you are as owners but but I was defending the owners which was it didn't go down well back then on the basis that of course they need to talk to other people if they're thinking of sacking the manager because yeah. because the flip side of that is when you get clubs who sack a manager and then everyone goes okay who's the next manager and they go oh we haven't sorted that yet we're going to look now like well and everyone is up in arms about that and rightly so but the only way logically you stop that happening is you're talking to someone else behind your current manager's back that's just the yeah. way it works so i'm with you 100 i think there's no way it, they haven't been doing all the data analysis since They've known and, be, and before, as you say. And I do think, and I think there's a line somewhere, it might be something you've put in here, but oh, somewhere I've read somewhere else, where they basically almost admit that, that like, we need, we need a twi- when you say about go back to why now, well, it needs to be announced so we can go and start fucking talking to people yeah. because it's going to get out then. If we start talking to agents about, can we get Alonso? Someone's going to fucking leak it. There's only so much containment you yeah. can do. And the agent probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, but so where 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 are you on it? Like, because w- would you, are you between Alonso and Deserbi? I think that's where most people are. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, you know, my line to to me mates when we were talking about it over the weekend was I look at that long list of you know the candidates from the bookies, and I see top two and say okay, and then after that I'm like. Nah. I, I and, couldn't and, see and any then, of the others, could you? No. Like Julian Nagelsmann? No. The fifth favourite? He, he fails the knobhead test as well. I me. think he fails the not very good test Well, as that well, as well. Yeah. I, I, I do no think tanks. like, I think Alonso and Deserbi, and this is the problem with the list, like Alonso and Deserbi would be, would give you hope and excitement. But there's no well, guarantees. In terms of the, I mean, the, the, the football he play as well. Do you know what I mean? But there's I mean, even it, that, isn't there? Have you seen all the stuff about like it is very different how yeah. Klopp plays. Yeah. Like and and that is a that's a thing as well. And that that was sort of something else that goes in the Linda's column for me. You'd be saying to the players, "Look, I'm sure Linda's got his own ideas and we'll tweak it." But it's pretty much going to be the same stuff that we've been been doing before. He's been part of the change with Trent coming into midfield and all that, hasn't he? That's been his influence, I think. Um, so. But we are going to see a change. Do you know, whoever comes in, that's obvious. It's mad that Ancelotti's not even on the list, is he? No, but I mean, you know, for obvious reasons, yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. his salary and the fact that he managed Everton for a start off. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to bring it back to sort of like, you know, there is this like, there is still a level of incredul- incredulity. Incred- I don't know how you say that. I don't know how incredulity. You use- yeah, that one. Uh, about him going. Um, and I totally get it. You know, people compared it to Kenny in '91 and Shankly in '74, and it just it just feels snap to, to us, doesn't it? Because we've not known that it's building. Really, we might have guessed, but then we thought, well, he's got his two point north, we're top of the league, we're in every comp. Yeah, he looks happy again. He looks bright. He's joking. You know, all of that. But I, I took some of the you know the lines out of his his interview and. He said, you know, I love absolutely everything about this club. I love everything about the city. I love everything about our supporters. I love the team. I love the staff. I love everything. But that I still take this decision shows you that I'm convinced it's the one I have to take. It's that I am, how can I say it, running out of energy. I have no problem now, obviously. I knew it already for longer that I will have to announce it at one point. But I'm absolutely fine now. 
I know that I cannot do the job again and again and again and again. After the years we had together and after all the time we spent together, after all the things we went through together, the respect grew for you, the, the love grew for you, and the least I owe you is the truth, and that is the true truth. That's it, pretty much. Um, and like I say, you saw him emotional at the actual game. So this doesn't feel whatsoever like, you know, something he's done lightly, something he hasn't thought about to the nth degree. The other bit that sort of jumped out to me a little bit was when he said that, and there's some, you know, he talked about talking about it with his wife and he said, and then there was some stuff that was personal between us. I don't want to get into too too much about speculating, you know, uh, like a, it's a little bit grim, isn't it? But that made me think, is he thinking about his own health? Is he thinking about his own mental health? You know, things like, you know, he lost his mum, didn't he, during COVID, couldn't even go over to go to the to the funeral. He lost his dad to liver cancer. And, you know, if your own, you know, seeing your dad die relatively at a young age, you know, considering even, it sounds heavy, but, you know, considering your own mortality and the amount of time you've got left to do all the things you want to do, again, wouldn't be unreasonable. But but he talked as well, didn't he, about, I, I was like quite passionate about the sort of the demands on managers and all that. And that he's not the first one to say it. And, you know, there's been books written on it. There's been plenty said about it. And I thought one of the best pieces that I've seen up to now about all of this, about about Klopp, about why it's happened and all the rest of it, was from Jonathan Northcroft in the in the Sunday Times. I just thought there was some uh, interesting stuff in there. And, he, you know, he'd he done that thing of he's had conversations with people and he doesn't necessarily tell you who they are, but he's definitely spoke to people and it's interesting. And he talked about the media demands and he said, People are saying, you know, it's gone to a totally different level in the past five years. So before games, there's press conferences, there's interviews with right holders, um, you know, and it's getting more and more left field, more and more demand, and no one just wants a quick sit down about team news. They want they want to be walked around the training ground. They want a quiz. They want lifestyle stuff. They want to get something different. And he's put quickly that becomes great and, and time consuming. And I, I saw an interview on Sky, and this was before all of this, and I felt that way watching it because it was like big, massive light in Jürgen's face, big sit down, dead serious, you know, questions as though you were like, almost like you were like grilling a, a politician. And I thought, like, how have we got here? Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's too much, this. And then you're not, not about Klopp and not about Liverpool. But, you know, it really pissed me off watching uh, Ipswich and Maidstone in the FA Cup. And, and the Maidstone manager stopped by, uh, you know, someone at the BBC as he's about to go down a tunnel, you know, in the middle of, like, you know, mastermind and a huge shock for some shitty little interview for the telly. And I'm like, who's asked about that? He said, nothing of note. And it's almost just like, oh yeah, but we're the tell we're the right holders. We, you know, we we're gonna demand X. We're like, fuck off. Let the game breathe. Let the game take place. He should be down the tunnel in the dressing room talking to his players about how we get past this team that like look like they're gonna go up to the Premier League. And we're you know, we're sixth division of it essentially. And it, it just annoyed me. I just thought we don't need that in, in the game. We don't need to go in that direction. And you can you know, you, you see it like, you know, I've seen it like I've done bits and bobs. Like, you know, I did something for Indian TV once and like the amount of right holders that are set up at Anfield yeah. with their own, you know, camera and spec and, you know, the tech so they can talk down the line and all that. And, and you know, the managers are just moving from like one interview to another one, to another one, to another one. And the amount of times you hear them say, as I've already said. Yeah. <laughs> I've, you know, Klopp says it himself. I've said to your colleagues, and you're like, it's not their colleagues. It's yeah. just another it's a completely journalist different another media, media company. company. But like to suggest that this doesn't do your head in and doesn't wear you down. And like he also talked about um, the Bournemouth game Sunday afternoon um, and, and that they couldn't fly back to Liverpool post-match because of storms for the second time this season. So he said, players got uh, couriered home in luxury vans, but everyone, including the coach and staff, everyone else had a five-hour bus journey back to John Lennon. Then you'd have to drive home from there. So clock gets home, one o'clock in the morning, 
He's got to go to train the next day. Then the next day after that, he's on the road again, back to London for the Fulham game. And it, it is just relentless. I know that from like speaking to people who work at the club, not Jürgen, obviously. And like, you know, their schedule's wild during the season, like. And it's like, you know, the their, their wives or whatever, like essentially football widows, do you know what I mean? So the idea, all of that, doesn't gradually, you know, have an effect on you. And he said himself, didn't he, the line we always say about the aging thing. I was just going to say that to yeah. you. It was funny that he specifically said it, didn't he? he? Yeah. If you take a photo of me, and then when you do it, you're like, fuck yeah. Because we, we, we said though. that about Rafa, you know, Julia obviously had the heart issues. You know, we see it again and again and again, don't yeah. we? And it's, it is frightening. Yeah. Like if you look at... And, I think that goes back to what you're saying as well. I I think there's been a few like quite telling little bits in the, in amongst it all. Did you see Wagner's interview after the game, his press conference? And they asked, <laughs> bear in mind, David Wagner's one of his best mates, was yeah. the best man of it, best men for each other at the weddings or something, something like, like that. that yeah. And um, they said to him, "Were you were you shocked that he that he's quitting?" And he went, "No." <laughs> and and he basically said in very short, like the very summary of what he said, like mine and Jürgen's conversations. Are, are private so i like i feel uncomfortable answering questions about it because i'm Cause not going to disclose anything yeah. that's private but no i wasn't shocked well that tells you a lot doesn't it so his best mate's not surprised he's quitting well what's he saying to his best mate and his wife like that it, it's just too much yeah. and and all those things you say and more i'm sure like it, it's just i saw him um, i think it was gary o'neill the wolves manager mentioning that like joe would be sitting watching his daughter and I'm, I'm, there's many other professionals the same but for, again people leave because of that he said i'll be sitting watching my daughter's fucking nativity play in school and i'm thinking about the match yeah because it's not it's never off your brain and i think just you, you can't underestimate when you're in any job that that's what it does to you how hard that is like for it to constantly be on your mind it's it's very very draining i, I heard someone talking in a similar vein on that um on the radio over the weekend and they they were fr again i can't remember me and my memory i can't remember the person or the manager they were talking about but that doesn't really matter the point was they were saying like they're friends with the manager and and like they went to you know so socializing basically and they said it was like sort of about 10 at night and he went right well i'm gonna go now um, because I've got to watch two matches of the opposition. And he, and he was watching two full matches back to back. And he was leaving at 10 o'clock. So, you know, three hours worth of footy. So he's getting to bed at one or later, then going in the next day. And like it, it does feel like the way footy's gone with all the analysis, with the amount of information, with all that. You know, you're not, you're not just turning up, rocking up, picking the team, doing a bit of training and then going playing golf. You know, it, it, it's all the time, isn't it? And John in Jonathan's piece as well, he said, at a League Managers Association conference before Christmas, the keynote speakers include a brain expert who spoke about sleep, a psychologist, a heart specialist, and a business guru whose re presentation was about reinventing yourself in middle age. I mean, so, you know, that alone tells you where they're all going with it and the fact that they're getting burnt out, that there's too much pressure on them. And all that. The, the other point about this as well, and um, look, it's still fairly early. You know, it only happened on Friday. Liverpool have only played one game since and there's basically going to be a, what, four-month conversation about this and beyond, isn't there? Mm. But the other thing, thing about this that I keep thinking about as well, we, we've talked obviously a lot on here about the 115 charges as, as the footy club should be renamed. We talked a lot about Manchester City. We talked about their attitude, where they're at, what they do. And Klopp's basically made, as far as I'm concerned, the league feel competitive by what he's done with Liverpool. And so that he disappears now. And there's a doubt now about Liverpool and about what level they can maintain without yeah. Jürgen Klopp. And if we, if we just turn into a league where they're just winning winning, winning, and no one's really challenging them to any great extent. That's going to be really, really boring. And I thought it was, I'm not a fan of Guardiola. We, we talked about this before, haven't we? I just, I can't get away from that. I just think he's, he's a bit of a blur. Equally, I know he's a genius, don't get me wrong. And I may well watch that documentary the BBC have made about him. I'm, I'm like, I want to watch it on one hand. And then another part of me is going, 
he, he does your head in. And I was well, like, maybe yeah. we should do it as one of our watch alongs yeah, that we've maybe, been talking yeah. about doing. Get everyone. Else. I've actually got a couple of books on me like that. I've bought, put them on the bookshelf. They're about him. They're about when he was at Barcelona, though. And I'm like, I should read that. And then the other part of my brain goes, "You wait till no, he does yeah. your head in." Yeah. But I actually liked them for a moment when he was asked about Klopp um, after their FA Cup game. I thought. I thought he was good on that. and But the bit that jumped out to me, he was nice about Klopp, obviously you'd expect that. And you said what he said before about he'll be back. But he also said, um, I have this feeling that he's leaving part of us at Man City too. And then he did a bit of a face. And he also said about, you know, he did the joke about I'll sleep a lot better type of thing. But that is another thing that we've talked about repeatedly, isn't it? The fact that those two clubs, managers, have pushed each other on, haven't they? You know, that's how we've had 99 points, 100 points, 97, all of those mad totals. Mm. It's been because of these two lock and ons and, 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 you know, you, you remember with Klopp when we didn't win the league and I'm sure he based, didn't he basically say in a, I'm sure it was like post Wolves or something like that. He went, I we'll just have to get 100 points then. Do you remember? Yeah. And everyone went, Wow, but it was like it was like he was sowing a seed to say, "That's how we I'm do serious. it." I remember just saying it at the time. Okay, yeah. you know what you've got to do next season, and then that was season we just went. Okay, we'll just win every fucking game, and we won our first twenty-seven or yeah. something ridiculous. Didn't we? Yeah. I saw someone tweet the other day. There was a there was a spell in Klopp's era, like if you Joey just added it all up, where he Three took a hundred. No, he took he took in a collection oh, of games yeah. he took a hundred and something this. like 105 from a possible 108 points is that Simon Brundish I think might yeah, yeah, whoever tweeted and, and Joe you just look at it and go that is insane well the home record was unbelievable it's insane. Well. or is unbelievable we talked about that before haven't we there's so much about what he's done that's unbelievable and, and is beyond yeah, he only won one, one title though didn't he Oh, well, it's, it, know, but it speaks really? volumes that I was just about to say to you and, and bear in mind we still did only stop them winning it once we only won one league and all of that. That's how powerful Man City are. So without him and without us doing that, what does this league We're become? the only club ever that's got 97 points and it's not resulted in a title. Well, I was made up, he made that point of saying that and Joey, he, he had a little pop at Enrique, didn't he? He was coming out saying it's because of FSG. Yeah. And, he, and I was glad he referenced this. And then look, everyone's got their own opinions over the years. But he said himself, like, if anyone thinks we'd have bought one more player and it would have made a difference to not winning the league with 97 points... I disagree with you. Like, it's wild that you've got 97 points and don't win a league title for it. It's just wild. Yeah, In the history of football, that's insane. And yeah, it, I, I agree with you. It was, it was nice seeing Guardiola say that and, he, and he's right. And it, I think it says a lot, do you know what I mean? Think of who Guardiola has had as rivals at clubs and different leagues around, around the world. And he's, it's not even a debate for him, is it? It's Klopp's my biggest rival. And now, and li by association Liverpool, while he's been at Liverpool, and they because he's pushed it, him, he's whole, made me better. Yeah, because he's pushed whole clubs me. made it that way, haven't they? You know, like you know, you see it all online all the time. You know, our fans, their fans are at each other's throats all the time. There's obviously various things that have gone on, you know, before, after games, and all that kind of stuff. There's like bizarre stuff. Do you remember that there was that story about um, City at Moan saying like? We hadn't played some buzzer or something to tell them to go back oh, out yeah. on the pitch. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it has developed to a mad extent, and uh, you know, and the, the the grim stuff like you know them their their players singing that song and all that, and you know, it, it has gone to a mad level. But that's just because we were the ones that were there upsetting their dream a little bit, wasn't it? So. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a loss to it's a loss to the league. I've heard, to be fair, I've heard a few pundits saying that. You know what I mean? Like some of the more serious ones that aren't saying daft things. Like really annoyed me. This like a couple of people, one on the radio and one on the telly, genuinely went just in in the middle of the coverage. <laughs> it was not like anyone's died, is it? And I was like, just just such a shit line. Like what? Why? Why throw that in? Do you know what I mean? So so we're hang on. When when Ferguson finally left Man United, but no Man United fan was arsed, no, did they just go outside? And like, you know, Evertonians having a pop and then hilariously get knocked out of the FA Cup straight after. Like, I actually thought about going back or tweeting about some of the stuff I'd seen from some Evertonians. And then I thought, well, you wouldn't know, would you? 
like who's the last manager you genuinely liked? Like you know, Joe Joe Royal won the FA Cup, didn't he, in '95? Did they love him though? But but even this mate, like, look, how Kendall's rare. probably the one, the, and Kendall the first time is probably the last time they've had like you know a manager where they were like they loved them because of all the things he did for yeah the but club presumably like that. and i don't know and i might make, make it to myself here but presumably he still ended up getting sacked like the the, the mad the thing about this experience which is so fucking rare and it's so rare in the history of football is that a manager saying he's leaving yeah. like he literally had to, he's literally said in his own comments i realized last year no one's gonna fucking sack, sack me, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so i've got to put myself out of this misery if i'm gonna yeah. go that's basically yeah. what he's saying because none of you fuckers will do it even when i'm losing fucking games on the bounce yeah. so that is such a rarity in modern football that a manager gets to that's announce he's leaving happen, is it? no but and it, and it's meant to go, we're meant to knock them down once they get to the top. Exactly. Well, and the we're meant natural, to break them. What, what's the natural order of things? The natural order of things is a manager does well, then they fade away. So by the time they leave, it might be a bit sad, but they've yeah, had the their, stars faded. Yeah, the stars faded and we pat them on the back and we, we say goodbye. This is very rare that this happens, that someone is leaving. Like, and that's why if he'd have left last year, we'd have everyone would have done that. It's really sad he's leaving. We'll say our goodbyes. Thank you for everything. But he was dipping. It's the fact that he's fucking done it again. We we did shows about it last year. Can he do it again? Looking back at all the people who have tried to do it and how few people have actually done it. He's rebuilt a fucking squad that <laughs> But even I'm that as well. like, like surprised by it. Like when you, yeah. you just keep saying like Connor Bradley coming in, McConnell coming in, and you're like, fucking hell, mate. You, what he's built behind the scenes, like across the board at the ground, the, the connection between the academy and yeah, and the the, the first team, making sure you know, we've developed, we've created Kirby through him being there because it needed to be all joined up bringing in someone like Linders and then bringing in the lads he knew that would create this environment that pr that produces these players. The the way where he's leaving us is, it's, I can't say it's unprecedented, right? Because I don't know every example, but it, it doesn't even compare to Ferguson because Ferguson left them in a fucking mess. Mm. He, he wanted, Ferguson for his own ego, wanted one more league title before he left. So he made sure that he did what he needed to do to win a league title. And then he walked out the door and everything went and to shit. Moise. And recommended Moyes. And recommended Moyes, yeah. <laughs> it's the opposite of what Klopp's doing. Klopp is literally, I, I did, I like that line of Klopp. Did you, did you read what he said? He said to the players, like when they were like, why now boss? And he's like, well, it's partly your fault because you've done so fucking well. Like if you hadn't done so well, I'd have stayed to make sure it was everything was in good hands for the next manager. But even that though, like, you know, his genius, if you like, is still sewn into what we've done so far. And we don't know how it's going to end. And obviously we'd all love if it was all four or the league or, or you know, some combination of the above. But his genius is sewn into this season. Like, the you know, the... The, the heavy rotation, the substitutions, you know, even getting kids coming on the pitch like, like Bradley, like the other lads, where they're at a level that they can come on and compete and they're pumped up and they're, they're motivated and they're confident. That's coming from the manager. That like He's managed them into that position. And so the idea that, you know, I'm going back to what I said before, when he walks away, it's changing. It's not, you know, so it's not, yes, you inherit the squad sound, but everyone's now looking at you and going, okay, well, what are you about? And and the, what Van Dyke said, where he was sort of like, you know, well, will you, he's got 18 months left, so's Trent, so's Mo Salah. So are you part of this next Liverpool? I don't know, mate. We'll see, mate. I'm not sure what'll happen, mate. You know, and there's like this huge uncertainty now. And, and that's the bit that I, I, you know, like I've never liked in the corporate world. I've tried to stay out of that as much as I can, but of being in it. You know, these like people who specialise in change and all that and we'll hand you a little book about change and say, go and read that. And it's like, yeah, mate, people don't like change for a reason. They want certainty. They like certainty. They like to know, you know, that it's safe where they live or whatever and that, that your kids are in a school that can be trusted, whatever. And so now we've got this huge uncertainty and the level of it's mad. So it's, you know, it's not just Klopp, it's the whole back room, it's the sporting director. And then immediately within, you know, two days, you got like a, the captain saying, 
I don't know either, mate. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you something we haven't mentioned, and I haven't seen anyone say this. We're just all assuming if we offer it to Xabi Alonso, he'll take it. I know, yeah. Like, for all the reasons <laughs> Sweet, you've that. said before, Alonso might go, no. Yeah, I'm not, all right where I, they are. I saw him get asked, did he have a... Because obviously he's going to get asked about it straight away. Did you see he got asked in a press conference last yeah. week, does he have a career plan? And he said, no, I ju I'm just taking it as I go. For all we know, Xabi Alonso is going to think about what you said before, and he's going to think... I don't want to be David Moyes following exactly. Alex Ferguson. So I tell you what I'll do. I'll stay in fucking Leverkusen. I'll win the title here. I'll win it again next year. I'll have a pop at the Champions League. And I'll let some other fucking mug come in and see if they can take over from Klopp. And if that goes badly in two or three years, I'll take over from them. Thanks very much, because that'll be easier. For all we know, that's what that's what he'll be thinking. Now, don't get me wrong, because I actually, it, it was interesting. When I saw Graham Potter took the Chelsea job, I immediately, I was chatting to my brother-in-law about it. He was in Everton. And I said to him, do you think that's a good move? And he was like, well, I don't think he can turn it down. I was like, I think it's crazy. I think it's an absolutely wild move for someone like Graham Potter to make because of the risks of taking on a job like that and knowing that you could be kicked out in a few months and it completely, you know, almost wipes away all the fucking good work you've been doing so far. I know Graham Potter's on that list there, but if Graham Potter had have been pre-Chelsea and he would, he'd have been in the... Do you know, Deserby, yeah, yeah. Rogers in the olden days role. Now everyone's like, mm. he's got he's got to build himself back up again. And now he's got so, to think carefully about what's next. But there's two sides to that. I was always worried when he had the glow up. The witch. Graham Potter, when he went to Chelsea, had a glow up, didn't he? He got his hair done. So uh, he started yeah, wearing glow up, like yeah. nice clobber and all that. And yeah, you've got to be careful with that oh, stuff. Yeah. But the point, the reason I say that is there will always be someone who says, I'll take it, who thinks they can do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's back to what I said before about we've all got an ego. And, yeah. you know, in football, there's absolutely loads of them. Well, we've, well, well, we've seen it, Rogers about, took it too early, didn't he? Yeah. But it, it, when you get it off it, you're like... It's a positive or negative force, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, the the other thing that worries me is just the, just the general influence, really. And that was a problem I always thought with Rogers. So, okay, you know, the tactics and things like that, approach to football... Some of that was good. Don't get me. We played some great football, you know, under Rodgers. We obviously come close, but we don't get there, blah, blah, blah. But do you remember, like, some of the stuff that just made you, your toes curl? Like, you know, Gerard being asked to, like, text players and stuff like that. And you're just like, fuck me, so what? We're basically saying here, Gerard's got a better stand than in the game than our manager. manager. Whereas Klopp, you know, we all took the piss, didn't we? But it was like, you know, remember all, like, he... Was it, did he meet did he meet Van Dyke in Blackpool? <laughs> yeah. Everyone was saying like he went on, on the, the road and, and all that. Yeah. But but you know like all that stuff like he's obviously played a part in in players come, choosing Liverpool because you know Van Dyke could have gone well wherever he wanted basically couldn't he and he chose Liverpool and it seemed to be a lot down to Klopp and that, that seems to have happened a lot and there was a I'm, I'm not sure where to nick this from but I see it in a, in a some form of media over the weekend. Uh, Ralph Ranick. Um, I'm not even going to attempt the German word, but um, it's a German word that means people catcher, um, and that's what it mentioned. Fanger. There you go, um, and that's how he describes Klopp um, because it's what I was saying about before. He's just got something about him. He's just got you listen to him, you believe him, you want you want to like spend time with him, you want to hug, you want to play for him, whatever it might be. You know, like. I interviewed him and I had all that. Do you know what I mean? Like he's just, he just has. Well, I saw, I saw someone else say it over the weekend and everyone forgets this now. The thing of managers coming on the pitch and hugging the players, that wasn't a thing. Klopp created know, that, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. No, managers didn't used to do that. And now each started doing it and you could see players being like, oh, fucking good this, isn't it? Yeah. Like even opposition players would be like, do I get a hug? Do I get him? Will he come over to me? Guardiola and then everyone else is to, like, I'll have to try and do that. Yeah, now he tries to like show both doing almost like tactical sessions like, straight yeah. on the 90 minutes. Yeah, but that's like. your, that, I mean, we had a little chat a few weeks ago. We would, would you take, would you have Guardiola if, if you could get him in a hypothetical world? And I think the reality is, no, it wouldn't, would, wouldn't be a good fit even if he is a genius and the best manager on the planet and all the rest no, of it. He be because he just, you just couldn't do it. No, that type you? of stuff is wild, isn't it? Yeah. Like that's his that's his equivalent of Klopp. Klopp comes on and gives you a hug and tells you you're fucking brilliant and whispers in your ear. It's like a fucking spell whispered in you. You can see like players light up. Guardiola comes on to someone who's even, and very Benitez-like, isn't it? Saying, this is the best time for me to tell you some advice when you've scored four. Oh yeah. And well, it's like, fucking leave me alone, you I prick. Know. 
Uh, but the, the Ranjik stuff, uh, whatever piece, of, like I say, I'd nick this from, there was, it went on to say that Canate um, apparently had a choice between Liverpool, Chelsea, Man United and Real Madrid. And his mind was made up by a video call with Klopp because he said, I watched nothing else but his eyes and I saw sincerity. Um, so that's, an, you know, that's another thing that we're losing, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? That's another thing that, because this is, you know, did you say it on here or did you just say it to me out there? Because we've been talking for ages now. I know. Uh, the, the thing about, you know, uh, all the different parts, you know, like uh, the money ball stuff. Oh, yeah, I said to you before we started and, and, But like yeah. you've heard that before about a player, haven't you? Where, it, you know, if you've got an amazing player, instead of buying the amazing player again, you buy a couple of players that are like are supposed to build up to being the equivalent of that player. Yeah. Which Literally what money, money ball started as like, yeah. In, and in that kind of felt like that's why we bought down and then Carol. Yeah. Um, that worked, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. But with clap, it does feel like we're losing loads of different characters all rolled into one, doesn't it? So yeah. we're losing, like we're losing the negotiator. We're losing the fella who can go, go and stare into a player's eyes and say, Madrid, Chelsea, Man United, whatever. You want to come here, mate? I'll make you, you know, all of that. Has Alonso got that? Don't know. I don't, I don't know enough about him. I know what, I know the player and I like the player and I like what I see what he's done so far in his fairly short managerial career. But we don't know that about him, do we? We don't know those type of things. And I feel like... Well, you can, look, without being harsh, right, you can, you can give an answer on that because we know... We've seen Xabi Alonso talk low. It's something I've talked about a lot about managers and ex-players, especially becoming managers. You can look at players and you can tell the type of character anybody is by listening to them talk and watch their body language and all of that. Xabi Alonso is not... this. I think Xabi Alonso is a fairly charismatic man, but he's charismatic in a different way to Klopp. Do you know what I mean? He's a very, he's a very steady, calm and influence, I can imagine, Xabi. Like a nice guy to be around, very knowledgeable, tactically very astute obviously very well respected within the game but he's not gonna fucking charm you off off your feet like Klopp can do you know what I mean he's not gonna I can't imagine Jabby Alonso giving you a, a speech that makes you go I'm fucking in where do I sign let me just I'm just on board here like Van Dijk joined us instead of Man City and that's like the Klopp thing doing the they'll fucking build a statue for you here lads do you yeah. know what I mean that that passion he's to got be right, hasn't it? yeah and the, that passion he's got you you can't replace with someone else who's out there. The only thing I would say is on that point, when Jürgen Klopp's not our manager anymore, he's also not any other club in England's manager. So when you've got a manager trying to persuade someone to join your club, he doesn't have to beat Jürgen Klopp. He just needs to beat all the other managers. Do you know what I mean? And we're mm. still we're still Liverpool. Yeah, of course. And we're still attractive and yeah. we've still got all yeah, of that. Yeah, we've got to remember that and you're right, to, you're right to say that. Like, you know, Liverpool has, has had this before. Like, 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 you know, everyone says, well, how did anyone think we'd replace Bill Shankly? Well, well praise the Mate, think about, think about, and this is why fucking Evertonians hate us and especially, and other clubs don't like us. How many times have we done that? Not just with managers, but with players. Like, I know. we're like, Sorry, how would you possibly replace yeah. him? How could you possibly replace Bill Shankly? Oh, guess what? One of the most successful managers of all time took his place. How could you, how could replace you possibly Kevin, Kevin Keegan? Keegan? Yeah. Oh, guess what? One of the greatest strikers of all time comes in. Yeah. We, and we've seen it even in our adult life when we weren't that good. It's like, how do you replace someone? Like, you'll ne we'll never see someone like Torres again. My heart's broken. Fucking Luis Suarez turns up and you're like, Jesus Christ. How, how, how do you replace, yeah, and how do you replace Luis Suarez? Ricky Lambert and, and Balotelli. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Money, Moneyball. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd love to see which part of Moneyball they constitute from Luis Suarez. Is, yeah. is, is, is wildness in his drinking. We'll cast over that. Uh, yeah, Liver, uh, Jürgen Klopp's win percentage at Liverpool, 60.8%. That, um, and that's better than Kenny Dalglish, better than Bob Paisley, better than Rafa Benitez, and better than Joe Fagan. Um, I mentioned before about the team for his first day, uh, so I'll just throw that in. It's mad, this uh, is. Mignolet, Klein, Skirtle, Sacco, Moreno, uh, Chan, Lucas, Milner, Lolana. Uh, Joe Allen came on as a sub on 81 minutes. Uh, Coutinho, replaced by Jordan Ibe, 87 minutes, and Origi. Uh, subs not used, Bogdan, Torre, Sinclair, Tashira, Randall. 
I mean, wow. wow. I know. When you think in that first, not even full season, we reached two cup finals. But we've said this before, haven't we? That is the thing that's always driven me mad about people referencing him saying, Klopp got time. Like, he took that fucking gang of shit houses and got them to two cup finals. And he went to City and won 4-1. Yeah. Um, but, and look, and if, just summing it up, to, and, and everyone's been saying this already, but when you think he took over that side and he said, Joe, when I, when I leave, I want to leave it in a better place than when I came in. Considering he's had to rebuild over the summer, look at our squad now compared to that. Well, Jesus. I mean, against Norwich, there, you know, we're all made up, aren't we? That you know, kids are assisting and, and looking great, and you know, um, but then when you you know when he when he makes those substitutions, Robertson's come on back, Trent's on, Sabaz lies on. Like one, I was thinking. What must Norwich be thinking? Did you, well, you were at the game, weren't you? Yeah. It, Robbie Fowler was on the telly. And he was funny. Like he went, he actually interrupted Laura Woods to, to make this point. He went, I've just got to say, he went, they're meant to be best mates and they're already losing like 4-2 or whatever it was. And he went, and just he brings up, on. and he went, he said, Wagner must be looking at him going, you know, mate of mine. And yeah. Honestly, because it, but, but like that was such a lift for the ground and it was almost like, you know, is that why he's done it? And like, you know, Robertson in particular, just brilliant to see him back because he's so like in tune with us, isn't he? As, as a, you know, the, between player and fans. Well, thing. his interview, his interview, have you, have you seen a clip of that? No. And on the, Joe on the pitch after the match, he, he made a great point about, uh, and Klopp referenced it as well. Like, but he went, I know, I know Jürgen doesn't want the fans to sing his name, but he laughed as he said, he went, I, I just think that's a battle he's going to lose. Yeah. That, just accept it. I put, that at the, I put that at the end of the piece I wrote because, like, you know, I wanted to write something. I've been in work, but I, I, I got there in the end, put something out on Sunday. Um, and that was the last line I put. I said, like, hey, you, you might not want us to sing that song, mate, but we're fucking singing <coughs> it today. And we did do, obviously. I uh, wanted to, uh, I did I did promise earlier that we'd um, have a look at some of the tweets that we were sent. Um, so I uh, just read some of them out and if any of them strike us as a, a talking point, we can we can go from there. So uh, Paul Brooks sent us one. He said, uh, Shankly and Klopp are the embodiments of Liverpool, the city, not just the club. Going to miss this dude, but so glad to have embraced him while he was our leader. Uh, Ian Schroeder, who um, sends in stuff regularly when we're doing the live shows, he says, it's not going to be the same. Jürgen's more than the football. He's united everyone and he's genuinely made my trips across the M62 on cold, horrible nights over the last nine years worth every minute i'd go and watch jürgen manager crown green bowls team uh he's been that Might great you wish uh, well yeah that's what we were mentioning before ian i'm pretty sure um is he used to work in um he used to work in the stanley and i and ian, i think that's him and is coming over from like leeds ways to still support the mighties um and so yeah i, I see what he's saying about it it's been worth the trip because of uh yeah and john riley says absolutely gutted but also massively grateful he revived the club he gave us some of the happiest days of our lives he's an extremely difficult act to follow and he's leaving a young hungry football team so it's not some sort of poison chalice really hoping we get alonzo um I mean, that's kind of where we keep arriving back to so far, isn't it? Uh, Paul Miney says, shocked and stunned, but what a legacy is left. And there's still a job to do. Minimum of one cup final still to come. Uh, my son saw his first game at Anfield on Ye under Jürgen. He's fortunately seen his win a final too. Thanks for the memories, uh, Jürgen. I got a tweet off someone else actually today, which is quite sad in a way where he was saying, because of like the scarcity of tickets, the demand for tickets, the way... It is now to get into Anfield and to get to the cup final and things like that. He said there'll be a lot of people now from here into May, obviously, where it'll be the last game they go to and they'll know, you know, this is the last time I'm going to see Jürgen as our manager. Mm. And, I, and he said and that and that was mine. He said that I know that I'm not going to be able to go to any more this season. So that was my last game. And I was like, Shit, yeah, because like we always say that thing, don't we? It's always someone's first game. Well, now it's always going to be someone's last game under. Yeah, under well, it's funny because I think that ties into why I'm you know less, probably less devastated about it than everyone else. Because I think I went through this whole process when we won the league and it, the, the stuff we've talked about in the past on shows about the tie-in with that in my life, you know, away from footy. And it was, it was huge. And for me, that was almost, there was a line in the sand there. And, it, and I stopped going the match around that time as well. So 
I knew I'd already had my last match watching Jurgen Klopp manage Liverpool at the ground, probably around around all of that happening. Yeah. Um, one more. Like, you know, I still carried on going the game for a bit longer, but even even there was a little thought came into my head going, oh, would I try and go to another match now to see him? And I was just like, no, I'm at peace with it. I've already done that. I'm more I'm already at peace with all that. Let someone else have their last game watching him. Um, but it is. It's 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 incredible, incredibly sad. It's funny actually because I was going to mention this much earlier in the show, but what I took from how I felt about it was that again we've talked about it on here a lot and wrote a big massive piece about it once upon a time not that long ago for this is Anfield where I said you know I felt like I was falling out of love with it all and even like I think one of the last things I did at, at the rap I think I, I said that as well and I still get that to an extent I, I sort of swing from high to low all the time on it about how I feel about it you know like so it, it's all got massively overshadowed now but when I saw like the, the setup for in fact that reminds me I need to uh, register for the ballot um but when I saw the setup for the uh the final tickets for the for the league cup and I just thought you know like we're getting 30 odd thousand in a, a Wembley and a third of the tickets is just going to go to corporates like shite and like all the prices have gone up again and that's good by the way like it's, it's good well, even for the... then that th- then there's liverpool sponsors or whatever so you know 30 have gone to liverpool but, but, but the amount of tickets that actually come to what i would term to be like ordinary fans is even less again yeah. but with the clock with the cop thing and, and i told you how i reacted to it in the office i actually thought bloody hell it's you know just when i thought you know i keep thinking just when i keep thinking i'm out it's pulled me back in again because I felt emotional about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, but, and I still do. But I wonder how you'll feel at the end of the season. And I wonder if I wonder if the end of this season will be a line in the sand for a lot of people who will go. Yeah. Do you know what? That you know, it's not going to be the same again. So that there'll be just a little bit more of me lost to this. Yeah. I mean, I I, I keep I keep coming back to this as well. A little little tangent, but um, Marie thirteen hundred at Marine again at the weekend. Uh, there was twelve hundred there the other week as well. That's that's a big attendance that for yeah. for a club at that level. And I I keep thinking where are all them people coming from? Like, is it I've had enough of the Premier League gravy train type thing? I'm 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 gonna go. I there. think we're gonna see. I think that's a pattern we're gonna see carry on. Because which cause is great for like Marine, isn't it? Like, oh, imagine if I was. If, I mean, I don't know who runs Marine now, but I'd be banging that drum if I owned Marine. Like. Bring the kids. Bring have the a kids. Pint. The pies are great. Uh, we we got sent a message uh, by someone over the weekend. Just said like you know, hearing hearing you talking about it all the time. Like I, I took my kids and it was great. Um, I don't think it was to Marine, but it was to like you know a lower level football match. And if you haven't done it, I'd recommend it because it feels closer to what we once had. Uh, but anyway, um, what else? Oh yeah, we we're doing the tweet to hurt me. I, I think what we're gonna do is aim for. Aim for two hours. What have we, we done? We're, we're, I think we're 15 minutes short of two oh, hours. Yeah, yeah. So we may as well no. go for the two hours. Uh, Michael Frost sends his tweet saying, I need some of Paul's life coaching on this matter. I'm not handling this clock news at all. Well, Michael, hopefully some of the stuff we talked about in the show um, will help you on that. Um, this was this was the tweet that I was referencing earlier, earlier from uh, Adrian Tempany. Um Great fella, great book. Um, he says, uh, I wonder if there was anything, anything that could have been done to just tilt the balance towards him thinking, yeah, I'll stay. Uh, he says, relieve him of all duties on summer tours, appoint a more hands-on director of football of his choosing, strip back the media spotlight. What do you think? Do you think, do you think there's absolutely anything they could have done? Do you think it's even realistic what Adrian's saying? I mean, like, you know, well, I, I think when he's saying normal. strip back the media spotlight as an example, you he can't. You can't. can't. It, you know, it's you, it's contractual. Yeah, it ha- it has to be him, yeah. and I think that's the problem. Like, let's say so the the example he gave, which was the moment, and it is funny. This isn't it? Like he's observed, like in the moment, he's in a meeting to discuss the preseason tour for next year. So think about how early that's happening. That meeting, like that's so he. He told FSG in November he was leaving. So that meeting to talk about the preseason tour for next summer is happening just after we finish this fucking preseason yeah. tour. And he's sitting in that meeting 
And he said, his quote was, I usually lead that meeting and I couldn't this time. And, and he's sitting there thinking, I don't know. I don't think I want to do this anymore. So on that idea, I think the problem with it is, think about it practically. So what do you do? Who organizes the preseason tour? Because he's got to be in control of it. It's his fucking team. Yeah. It's like, it's so integral to what he's doing for his entire season. We've seen the year before, you get your preseason wrong. It fucks up your entire season. So your preseason is just as important as the season itself, if not more important. So he's got to be part. So I think it would be difficult. And the long ball ones were never the ones he wanted to do. He pretty much has said that as well, hasn't he? Because I know that sort of upsets some fans who are in the long ball destinations at times. But he's talking purely from the practicalities of getting my team in the best shape it can be so we can go and try and get 100 plus points and win another league. He basically just wants to fuck off to that gaff in Germany, doesn't he? And close yeah. all the doors. And, and think about that on. conversation, right? So, and I think it's a really good point to raise and to, to talk about. Because I've done this to, with businesses, like put everything up on a fucking wall and we'll sort how you can, we can make your life better as the boss. Yeah. We'll sort this all out. And I can imagine you stand there and like, imagine that conversation that with FSG. So we, so Klopp, go, you, they say to Klopp, so you tell us off this, what you don't want to do anymore. And he goes, I don't want to do any long haul preseason. And they go, well, we can't do that. And he goes, why? And they go, well, commercially, for the international fan You're base. The manager. Like, we want to see you. Yeah. So, sorry, mate. That's that can't come off yeah. the list. And if and if you don't want to do that anymore, we actually have to have a new manager, and that's non-negotiable. It's like, all right, well, we leave that on. Preseason planning. Well, don't you need to be part of that? Yeah. Okay. Well, we have to leave that on. Uh, press conferences. Well, you can you're contractually obliged to do them, mate. Okay. <laughs> What what can we take off then? That's stressful for me. League Cup press conferences. <laughs> yeah, and they've already done that. <laughs> League Cup press conferences. That's yeah. it. And it's like, okay, was that enough? No, no. I'm still goosed. Yeah. Uh, what what about all these uh, like you know annoying interviews with Des Kelly who I can't stand because he's an absolute whopper. Yeah, contractually obliged to do that. Oh, sand. What about all these players that keep asking me about twelve days? Here's though it's a joke when I'm trying to say, look, it's not good for the players. Yeah, you've got to keep doing that. Yeah. All right, so Yeah, can I control anything about what they ask me? No. no. That, well, can I stop them asking me the same question every week because it's driving me mad? No. No. Um, <laughs> did you see that line that I put in there as well, by the way? Um, in 34 years of being involved with football, since turning pro as a player, he's had three months when he was unemployed. Yeah, I, and I, look, I think, I think that's sort of, and it's funny this came up for me, in the last couple of weeks because my nephew who people have been listening to, to us talk for a while will know it. like my nephew's been in academy football since he was four and he's, I, th I think I'm allowed to say this out loud I think I'm pretty sure I am he's he's been signed up he's been given his his first contract made up obviously but the first thing was then I like and I hadn't this I hadn't even comprehended this right we were talking about going on holiday next year a family holiday because we all went away together last year and my sister went, oh, he, he can't come. And what do you mean? She went, he can only go in, in, he's only got these few weeks where he can go on holiday. And I was like, what, why? She was like, pre-season training. And it just hit me like a fucking bat in the face, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, fuck. He's in that world now. Yeah. He can't choose when he goes on holiday. And I think we all forget that. We just all forget that these people, and we everyone going back to what you were saying before, people will do that. Well, they get paid loads of money. Well, for a start, not all of them do get paid that much money, by the way. Oh, yeah. But even for the ones who do, the, that's hard. Mm -hmm. Like, for your family life. And just going back to something that I think is worth mentioning as well, because for, for us, especially for anyone who's got young kids in their lives, who've ever had young kids in their lives, I think that will have been a big part of it, like having a grandkid. Because think about what it's like, Joe, like, if me and you don't see each other for a year, there's mates I haven't seen for a year, two years, and I'll see them and they won't have changed. They're, yeah. They just look exactly the same. You don't see a child for three months and all of a sudden they can speak, they can walk, yeah. they, and you missed all of that. And you're like, fucking hell. And also when the little like is, is like key for bonding with them. Absolutely, do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's a hundred percent. That's a shout that. Uh, Form me till I die said the absurd conspiracy theories that he's really leaving because of FSG's transfer policy or that something must have happened behind the scenes to force him out. Why can't people take what he says at face value? 
I had, I've had, I should expect, I've had some tweets along those lines. I haven't had, you're one of them spirits of Shankly twats mm-hmm. who believes everything FSG say. Really, am I, mate? Yeah. Um, Isn't it amazing how many people that are like that? I've experienced that like first hand where someone has said to me, what I'm saying isn't what I think. <laughs> no. And I'm like, sorry, I don't, I don't understand this conversation. And they're like, no, you, you, you're telling lies. I know what the truth is. It's this. And you're like, do you know how egotistical yeah. that is? That you think you know what I think more than I know what I think. Yeah. That's wild. It is, isn't it? And when you get the, I mean, it blows my mind. So I'm just, it's, I just, you, I can't do anything but laugh at it. I think it's just, but you'll never stop that. That's the reality. You'll never, no. you've literally got Jose Enrique doing it. Yeah. I, he literally said, I don't care what Klopp says. It's because of FSG. <laughs> and Klopp's had to look at a camera in the middle of a fucking Reference interview him. and say to him, Jose, I like you. You're talking you shit. for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're talking shit. You're talking shit, lad. I know. Like, and, and people still won't have that. Like he's yeah. literally addressed it and said it. Yeah. And then it's still the carrying no, on. He's and lying. It's like, yeah. Okay. So you, so what you think, you think he just, you think after nine years, he went into a room, said, I want this player. They went, no, when he went, all right, I'm leaving. I'm gone. Yeah. After, you know, after they backed, uh, what was it, 115 million bid for Kai Cedo. Yeah. Um, after we, already buying the lads he wanted. He already had McAllister and to Bosley, didn't he? Uh, like, pe- people never get in the fact that there's a, there's not, a, there's not a, um, infinite fund of money at Liverpool. But, he, but even he referenced it in that, like even he said out loud in the press conference, didn't he? Of course, there've been times I've disagreed yeah. with them. It's not like he's hiding it. It's no. not like there's some like secret. And that's what you'd expect. Of course. Well. well, every manager would say that, wouldn't yeah. he? Every manager. And look, we, we referenced this a few weeks ago. Ten Hag should be saying more of that. Ten Hag should be saying more. I asked them for to pay 90 million quid for Anthony and they said no, because it's a well-run footy club. Ferguson didn't get every play he wants. Guardiola doesn't get every play he wants, even with the Eddie Howe, just with the fucking Saudi Arabian money, doesn't get every play he wants. Guess why? Because there's fucking things they've got to do behind the scenes first. Yeah. Um, Chloe, it's very difficult to put into words. He doesn't know I exist yet, but I already miss everything he gave us and not just in football terms. Respect his decision, but I'm gutted. Um... Derek says, as someone that this resonated with me, Derek, as someone who was walking around school, Carter, this age 15, and hearing someone say Dalgleish had left, uh, the news about Klopp all these years has felt the same. Total shock. But Klopp is leaving us in such a strong position. The next manager won't have to do much. I, I've said before, <laughs> one of my teachers in my school uh, was a blue nose and was absolutely sort of, you know, like, ah, oh, Kenny's gone and all that. And I, and I didn't have a phone, we didn't have the internet. And I didn't believe him until I went home for my dinner and there it was on the, the on the news, on the telly. You know, Kenny quits on the front of the Echo, the ashen face and all that now. Well, you just check on the internet, don't you? And very yeah. quickly uh, found out it was right. Um, here's one which you referenced before. Uh, the 44th Earl treated us to say, I'm wary of the Zabby bandwagon. He hasn't achieved anything yet. How can he be ready for a job this big? He's vastly underqualified, and I'd prefer his current rival, Tuchel, who ticks a lot of boxes, including the Noho, to win a European Cup. Yeah, but it's funny, isn't it? Because even I mentioned Tuchel only before, because I don't want Tuchel either, but only because I'm surprised he's not higher up the, the order. But even Tuchel, the fact that Xabi Alonso has gone to Leverkusen and is currently beating a Bayern Munich side with Bayern Munich resources, who've just bought Harry Kane, like... That doesn't say a lot for Tuchel, does it? Even though he's got the pedigree of, from previously. A yeah, very weird one about um, being in Cambodia. We'll we'll swear that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just trying to see what else you've got tweet wise and whether that. Where, where are we now, time wise? I, I think we're we're roughly about. Well, I need a cup of tea. I know that, and that always tells me we've done a fair bit of talking. Um, we were going to talk about uh, the Norwich game. We were going to talk about the Chelsea game because we do have actual football to play here. I mean, um, I mean, on the Norwich thing, very, very briefly, we already talked about the impacts of uh, McConnell. Um, 
and you know how he looked great on his debut at 19 we talked we mentioned Connor Bradley as well who was absolutely brilliant once more only 20 um and we mentioned all the you know more seasoned pros who, who suddenly emerged and looked like the cavalry Chelsea um interestingly uh, we've got them on Wednesday it's a flag day in terms of spying cop group have put that out there everyone bring your flags your banners let's try and properly get behind the team make it a bear pit and get Chelsea done and out the way. Um, Klopp's quote on that was, it's, we play on Wednesday again, and if we could ignore, ignore for 95 to 100 minutes that the manager's leaving at the end of the season and just do everything to make it as uncomfortable for Chelsea as possible, that would be great. Uh, I'm right behind that, and I think I, I think it will be. Uh, I think um, Anna uh, tweeted me, Anna Bear, just saying, um, it felt like everyone, had some, some, everyone wanted to have a gab at Norwich and be like, oh my God, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's out the way, you know? Yeah. And, and like... We've said this before, though, about him saying about his own song and hopefully he's just accepting now. I just... I think he I'd is. like someone to have a little word in his ear and just say, look, mate, them singing about you helps with this. It's yeah. not... They're not mutually exclusive things. Like, I we can... Gonna be we right can right make the atmosphere it? intimidating and, and let the crowd sing about you as well. And I... I've got no worries for the for this next run of games about the atmosphere and the impact because I think it will just make Anfield wild. My only concern is as we get you to the back end of things, what I don't want it to turn into is like the you know, the Gerrard huddle when we were under Rodgers. When you look back, like at the time we're like, yeah. And you look back now and think way too much emotion, fellas. Like yeah, we needed, we needed someone there to go, we need to knock this down a notch and just get, get into fucking get over the line well, what I've liked as well is you know the fans is one thing and I, I think we'll all be fine on against Chelsea on Wednesday I've liked that you've heard the training sessions were absolutely fine yeah. they were normal and then I think you know okay it's Norwich and, and you know Norwich are in the Premier League and all that kind of stuff but you know the pressing was spot on the effort was spot on yeah. you know the, the performance level was spot on we scored some great goals etc etc nothing in the performance said they're, they're all deeply affected and, and, and yeah. they can't go out there and perform. Yeah. So uh, I almost felt like, okay, only Norwich, but we started to bust a narrative, you know, from from the first match. Yeah. And, and hopefully that continues. Uh, some weird stuff about uh, the Chelsea game is um, you you got a bit of shit I saw for basically saying their <laughs> shit. Saying their shit, yeah. Um, and they sort of like, you know, they've, they've been on a, a better run of form recently, but... I would still say not exactly scary. If you look at their away record, they concede as many as they score. It has been, though, a, a bit of a draw fest. The mad stat is that each of the last seven in all comps has finished as a draw, which is, in fact, the longest run of consecutive draws between top fight clubs in English football history. Wow. Yeah. So we need to not... We could do with not draw them. Um, it's also a, a game where Klopp can reach 200 wins in the Premier League. He'd be the seventh manager to do so, should he do that. Uh, and he'll be the second fastest uh, at 318 games to reach the milestone. Of course, after Pep Guardiola. But, you know, but, you know, Klopp's not running a club that's being run in the same way as the one Pep Guardiola's at. Should I say, no, you let it go? Did you see, <laughs> uh, to, just on the no, you let it go, Belgium, the re- oh, I saw you tweet about it. I'd re- already seen the tweet. And then I the saw you replaying tweet a game because of a nonsense VAR decision. No, you let yeah. it go. Can't be done. It can't be done. Uh, yeah. Chelsea this season, I've lost to West Ham. Chelsea this season, I've lost to Nottingham Forest. Chelsea this season, I've lost to Aston Villa to Brentford, to Newcastle, to Man United, to Everton, to Wolves, to Middlesbrough. Fuck's sake, Reds, if we can't beat them and go on and win this league cup and win this league and do a big great thing for Jürgen because he's boss, then we all need to have a massive word with ourselves, don't we? If you're going on Wednesday, take your scarf, take your flag. Don't worry about what anyone else thinks. Get behind the side. If a pint gets you going, have a little pint. Whatever it takes, whatever it you know, whatever it does to rev you up, let's take it in the ground and spill some positive emotion onto that pitch and help us beat these bastards. Uh, I'm going to say 
that that is the end of this show. Uh, I think we've done about two hours. That is a bumper show for you. As I said at the start, it would be. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let us know your feedback. Thanks for the support. Go over to Patreon and sign up for that and give us your money to help keep all this going. Yes, I'm not brazen. See you next week.